Y'all used to hate on all of my moves, but now niggas on it. Y'all used to bait me on me and my views, but now niggas on it. I used to tell them I'm gonna me a show, but now niggas on it. Her homies on it. Your homies on it. Y'all used to hate on all of my moves, but now niggas on it. Y'all used to bait me on me and my views, but now niggas on it. I used to tell them I'm gonna me a show, but now niggas on it. Her homies on it. Your homies on it. What up, what up? We back. Gorillas Podcast 7, man. We here on location at Frame Restaurant, 222 Market Street. It's your boy, C. Diddy. Matt makes me sick. We in this bitch. We got a special guest in the building, man. It's my guy right here. Somebody that I've known for a little minute. We just recently reconnected. I, every time I, re, I reconnect and talk to him, I got to explain who I am again and how I know him again. But now I think we got it. I think, no, we, got I think it. We, we got it. We <laughs> like, oh, yeah, no, because, yeah, yeah. I'll be burnt out. It's all that time. <laughs> What's up, man? I'm here. Oh, man, he's here. Today, today's guest is a rapper, visionary, dot connector, and a mythical figure on the streets of Philadelphia and beyond. His no-nonsense, straightforward approach to music making and his business savvy allowed him to forge relationship with one of the biggest moguls in hip-hop history, 50 Cent, that still stands strong as ever today. His unofficial role as A&R to the streets has allowed him to play a part in the careers of artists such as Meek Mill, Cheek Raw, Reed Dollars, recent guest Tone Trump, and many more. TRP Nation, give it up for the founder of G-Unit Philly, Mike Knox. Damn, that's all my EPK. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yo, make sure you get those. <laughs> now, what's up with it? I'm here. What's up, brother? See, I've been working, man. I had a lot of guests up here. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get right to the shits, huh? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. But First three minutes, you want to get right to the shits, man. What's up, man? What's up, man? Uh, I, I, you know, I, I'd, be, I'd be liking to be transparent with the audience and kind of mm. get them, like, some of the backstory and stuff like that. Uh, you had mm-hmm. one of the most... Epic going away parties <laughs> in the history of Philly, and I, yeah. I I was a part of that. Yeah, Me, my man Reddy, Miss mm-hmm. Cat. Yeah. So that's how we initially met, met yeah, and yeah. knew each other from that or whatever like that. And it yeah. was like literally, it's like you know how now you see uh like them streamers do like twenty four hours with this person. Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. forty eight hours with with Mike Knox. That yeah, was basically was. how it was. It was like the countdown from Monday. That joint was on a Wednesday. You yeah. had to turn yourself in on Thursday. Yeah. And for that whole 48 hours, we back and forth. Meet me yeah. here. Pull up here. I yeah. got this and this what? going on. This really? nigga coming. I got section money. Yeah, that's whatever. Crazy. And, and we blew yeah. the roof off that joint. So yeah, that's where we initially met. Yeah. So to see it come back around, mm-hmm. and then roughly about a year and a half ago, mm-hmm. after you got back home, got mm-hmm. your foot and settled, we did an interview with Ron from Uncut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you hit me up. Good work. That's yeah, a nice yeah, yeah. joint. I like what y'all did. Definitely. Send me Shout a number. We're going to figure this out. So yeah. from there, we started talking again, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then over the last, you know, year and all of that, you throwing parties with my bro, Carla Kelly, yeah, 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 Mont Brown, yeah. all of that. So yeah. it brought everything full mm-hmm. circle. Together. Yeah, Together, sure. full circle, man. You already know. So I definitely appreciate you being here. Nah, for sure, man. You know, I got to support the love. Why not? Yeah, you know? for sure. I, and I know you a super in-demand uh, guest. You, you, know, mm-hmm. you know a lot of stories. You mm-hmm. know a lot of backroom stuff. You know... <laughs> You know what rappers got? Wall. You know what rappers got flipped upside down? Got they got they? Yeah, they, I flipped they, a couple rappers upside down <laughs> flipped too. Flipped a couple rappers upside but yeah, down. I know. Uh, I'm gonna preface this before we get into it by saying, MK said we could talk about everything. Yeah, and it's you know I'm not one of them guys that yeah, it's love like, here. Don't ask me this, don't ask me that. Right. It's, it's all history. It's a part of yeah. You know who I am and, and what I've been through. So I don't really trip off. I think the best way to start is um, you really can't tell your story mm-hmm. without telling. The Philadelphia rap scene story. Yeah. Because they intertwine. Right. And you're directly involved with a lot of stuff that people may or may not know about. Mm-hmm. Other people are involved in your story. Mm-hmm. There's Cosmic Kev is like this big, looming big, big figure big fact, that was that was in all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. So what was the moment <clears throat> that made Mike from 16th and Cecil be more decide mm-hmm. I'm gonna try my hand at rap and start fucking with the music? Honestly, um, I had got shot. I was in the street. I had got shot. Yeah. And I think from that from that moment, I can I like inherited a bad temper. You know, just because you know anybody that knows when you get shot, like after when you're recovering, you start. There's times you get hot and cold flashes or heat flashes. And well, yeah. I've never been through that. <laughs> I hope you never. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Yeah. You, get, you, get, you don't want to be there. Yeah. But you get these. Flashes like sometimes your body get hot. And it, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So how old were you um, when this happened? Sheesh, I was. I want to say 18. Okay. And um, I had a colostomy bag. For okay. Like nine months. Oh, somebody tried to get you out of here. Yeah, they tried it. Um, 
But, you know, it went both ways. It was a shootout. Gotcha. It wasn't like a joint gotcha. where I just got shot. So, um, going to go see the doctors and stuff like that. And I think my leg was messed up real bad. Mm-hmm. So, he kept telling me that I wasn't going to really be able to get the full effect of my leg back. Okay. Because my leg was so weak that if I got up and walked, I would fall. Yeah. So, he told me, like, yo, your, your leg's not going to become... What it once was, and I'm, I like snapped him like the fuck out of here. He's like, yo, you need to find something to do with your temper. Your temper yeah. is really bad. You need to bring it down. And um, he said you need to start writing your problems out. And so I was just right, and I just started rapping. Okay, you know what I'm saying? And that's how I started rapping. Mm. So when you you started writing, when did you actually start like putting it? On? Um, um, a friend of mine, he was a rapper as well, and um, I used to be with him in the studio and shit like that. And I used to, like, do little shit like, mm. here and there until I felt like it was good enough right. for to be <clears throat> heard. How long, how long did it take you to feel like you had something? Like, how many months, years, whatever, before well, you, like, I ain't trash no more, I can well, present you know, a lot of people don't know that before I, I rap, I was making beats. Oh, uh, I didn't you know, know that. A yeah, lot I, of people I, don't know. Like, they don't know how to work that shit. Yeah. But I was in a group that a lot of people don't know about called Affiliation. We were signed to Tommy Boy Records. I know that group. In 96, 97. Yeah. And it just didn't work out with us. I was like the, I'm not going to say everybody wasn't street guys, but I was talking the street shit. Right. But that's all I was in at that time. Yeah. And um, I ended up leaving. It's crazy because, <laughs> remember this name, Chris Atlas. Chris Atlas was that Tommy boy at the time. He was an A&R. Okay. So at that point back then, I negotiated the deal for us at Tommy Boy back in 97. Right. So I was already, like, making my relationships and stuff like that because I knew you had to step out and talk to people in mm-hmm. order to make something happen. And um, I went to leave the group. And he was like, yo, I'll give you a deal, but we're going to have to wait to... I think I was leaving. It was, like, probably 98, middle of, middle of 98. He was like, you know, year 2000, we'll sign you. So solo. basically a year and a half. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm not waiting for that. You know what I'm saying? So I ended up leaving. So now I'm a solo artist, and I don't really know what the fuck to do because I'm only used to doing one verse. Yeah. But I'm spending my money. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So I'm in the studio and I'm on my time. So I would, you know what I mean, do my verses and shit. And I actually had met Cosmic Kev. And I met Cosmic Kev through somebody, but I met him at a gas station. This is no exaggeration. And the first time we met, we was about to fight. <laughs> that sound about right. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, he just was not trying to hear my aggressiveness. He wasn't going for it. Kev moved like Kev moves like a nigga with seven hundred bricks somewhere. Like no. he's very you know why? discreet and like no. shut off unless you get the right intro. But you know why? A lot of people misconstrue something. We're gonna get to him. But yeah. I'm gonna say this one part. Yeah. He comes from that era mm-hmm. of not saying he was in the streets, like, like to that core. He's around it. But he was around so much of it. He came up with those niggas. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So he, the niggas from, he's he's from Uptown. He mm-hmm. comes from that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to his brother, Kenny Lee. You know, they, these guys was around. Yeah. So, you know, uh, it was aggressive. And uh, then we got cool. And he kind of critiqued a lot of stuff that I would give him. And um, some shit he liked, some shit he didn't like. Right. I wasn't a songwriter yet. He's the reason why I know how to make songs now. Like, literally, from when I go in the studio, if I go in the studio tomorrow and I go turn the microphone on, the first person I think about is Cosmic Cam. Gotcha. Like, what would Kev want me to do? Yeah. Because that's how I know how to make my best music. You understand what I'm saying? And uh, we gained a really, really good relationship. You know what I'm saying? Over the years. I've been knowing that man 30 years, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, what was the first record that you had that Kev started really like starting to play and get behind? I want to say it was a record called "I Love My City." So this was a this, <laughs> this it was a it was a beat from a group that was in Philly. It was their instrumental. Got you. And the beat was hard as shit. I actually did like the record, and I remixed their shit. What group was it? I don't, I don't fuck with them. Either. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Say less. You know what I'm saying? So I, I remixed the shit, and um, he started to play that more than he was playing. Playing the original. They joint. Yeah. 
and it kind of caused a little conflict or whatever. I didn't know. I was just like, I was just, just know, doing shit. I was just doing shit. You know what right. I'm saying? And at the time, I didn't, I didn't, that was like my first song, like format. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I got it now. I know what he wants. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then I started to look for beats along that line and the, that format. Yeah. And just start connecting. Where did, like, we talked, we talked a little bit uh, before we start rolling and stuff just about you understanding pockets, right. music structure, flow. BPM, all of that. Where do that even come from? Or is that just something that you picked up over time of mm -hmm. just, you know, being in the studio so much and being around so many different rappers mm -hmm. that you could pinpoint who's good at what and what they should be doing? I, 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 I can honestly say it came from me because for the simple fact, when I started to be just rapping just for me in the studio, you got to understand, back then, studio time cost it. Yeah. Right? And I would do... I would set myself up to try to do three records every time I went in the studio, mm -hmm. right? I knew the first two, and that's when I was writing them. I knew the first two would be strong because I had to memorize the third one. You know, I would have to come back and do, but I would rush and do it because that would, that would be like the last hour. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so I know yeah. when I come back, I got three more, but I got to finish that third one from the last session. You understand know what I'm saying? And um, that helped me to structure my formats and really lock in and know what pockets to go in. And, yeah. You know, um, tones and, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people, you see these rappers, they rap and they have both their headsets on. Yeah. You're not supposed to do that. Right. You're supposed to have one off so you know your tone on the actual beat and how to deliver. Right. And um, I learned that part right there, I learned from DJ Rain. Mm. Shout out DJ Rain, man. DJ Rain told me that. Yeah. He taught me that, yo, he said, because I gave him a record before, at the time, it was DJ Rant and Cosmic Kev. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, um, was it Radio Cosmic Active? Cosmic Kev is responsible for me. The original come-up show was, was, was Radio, Radio Active, Active with Kobe Cole. Mm -hmm. And Kobe Cole played a major part. QDZ plays a major major yeah. part. But Cosmic Kev, Cosmic Kev is responsible for Mike Knox. Right. That's no no games. Nobody ever played me like him in life. Right. Um, but DJ Rant gave me that jewel when I played him a record. He was like, yo, when you recording this, you, you got both your headphones on? I'm like... Yeah, you post to. What the fuck? like, <laughs> nah, take one off so you can hear your tones. And right. that's how I started to to um lock in my backgrounds and you know all that stuff. Yeah. Do, you, do you think you starting with production played a part and you understanding tempo and BPM and stuff like that? Um not really. I think it was just more so feelings for me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cuz uh learning that was just more so just you know setting it up in the formats and knowing the, the machine. But I think a lot of it just became filling. Like now, you listen to music now. Back then, we had three verses on everything. Right. Yeah. Now it's two. Yeah. It might be. It might be, it might be one. one. Yeah. 28 bars you know with so a pre-hook like, and then an after. And right. And, beats. and then we out of we here. We out of here. Next. Like if you're in a club and the DJ played some shit, he may give you a hook of this one, get out and go into some other shit. Yo, true right. story. Do you know yeah. how many people didn't know Uzi was on Bad and Bougie? Cause they never made it to that far in the yeah. song. Cause the shit got three whole no, verses. You right. No, I'm that. not joking. I remember like no, seeing people like right. expression of like, no, wait, that's what? A fact. They like didn't people know. didn't know this song was eight times platinum. No, no, people no. did <laughs> not know who <laughs> was on that joke. They didn't know because they Seriously. never got to the shit. Yeah, straight yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. 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 Music now is totally but different. It is. Yeah. 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 yeah that's yeah. true. Me and him talked about that mm -hmm. when we talked recently. It's like uh, uh, that's like you know about him structuring songs mm -hmm. and stuff for the G and Philly era of knowing like yo, if I rap first, it's over. Like, yeah, that they're, shit was. They're cutting this shit. And yeah, that I knew. Like when, when <laughs> yeah, we back did, in the day, <laughs> song be thirteen minutes long. I'm going at that, bro. Well, <laughs> yeah, when we when we did G and Philly, right? If you want to get to that now, no, yeah, not we, yet. Okay, not go yet. ahead. Oh, I'm, not yet. To that. What was going on? Mm -hmm. Who else is at the time when? Mike Knox is emerging. You got the relationship with Cosmic Kev. You're Ooh. starting to get your first radio play and all that. What's the tone of the city? What's going on? Who's the three most poppinest rappers or the movements or whatever, whatever? Mm -hmm. And what are you doing aside from rap at the time? Okay, well, it was a guy from these two guys. Gilly the Kid. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say just them two. I'm going to just say these two guys and then I'll say the crews after Gilly the Kid. And then there was this fucking guy from South Philly named Beanie Siegel. Yeah. At the time, he was Beanie Mac. Yes. And nobody knew what he looked like. He was like a, he was, uh, again, a mythical he was like figure. A myth. Yeah. Like, nobody knew what he looked like. All you just kept hearing him. And um, my first interview on a come up show, yeah. I was scheduled to come on. Cosmic Kev called me. He said, yo, I need you to do me a favor. I said, what's up? He said, I need to push you back to next Friday. 
He said, you know, I got this guy, Beanie Mac, coming up. You know, I, I got to do his interview. You know, he signed a rock from him. I'm like, cool. I just asked you one thing. He like, what's up? I said, just let me come. Right, we never seen this nigga. Yeah, you and know, I want to see this nigga. We, th- we thought we thought Beans was AI, not yeah, like, not like, Alan Iris. We thought he was artificial like intelligence for real like, back then. Back then, and bro, because nobody knew. Him. When I tell you, he said, "All right, come on." I came. I didn't even meet Beans that day. Yeah, he went straight into because you know Power ninety nine. It was set up the DJ booth, and then over there you look through the glass. Yeah, mm-hmm. control so I'm room. sitting in there with Kev. He don't even know I'm sitting there. And when that nigga started rapping, he rapped over. DMX, where my dog's at, beat. Mm-hmm. He rapped over that shit from the beginning until they went to commercial and came back and kept rapping. <laughs> and I said, I don't want to do this shit no more. He <laughs> quit rapping. I'm done. I'm going back to the streets. And this, I'm dead serious. I'm like, this nigga just, he was different. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Gil, different. He was, that nigga was, he smelled blood. Him and Beans at that time? Yeah. Was a problem, and then you had you know, speed problem. Yes, I'm glad you brought speed. Ab lava problem. Yeah. Yeah. Dutch problem. Problem. Talk to Dutch Burn. this week. Problem. Lil Rocky chop problem. These was problems at this time. Yeah. Reese Rolex problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. These guys. This is a time where if you wasn't hot, get the fuck out the kitchen. Yeah. If you could If you can't stand this. Move. We yeah. went from a period at that time of oh, probably most like one too. That's my people. Yeah. I come up on the most. I love them niggas. But we had we had a time period of Philly like a like a six year down period. There was nothing going on. Right. It was Will Smith, Bahamadia, the Roots, and mm-hmm. that was it. And that was it. And then ninety eight. That shit got different. It just yeah. went. Ninety seven, ninety eight. It just went. It just blew the fuck up it, all it, over again. It, it got different, and you had to really, really get in there and be a dog. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And you got to understand. At the time, see, people had a misconception because I'm from I'm from North Philly. I'm from 16th and Cecil B. Moore, right? But I used to hang up Logan, so they'll fight about me, right? No, he's from here. He's from, <laughs> you know they go through yeah. that, and that's how I used to see Gil and all of them all the time and shit like that. And we would we would uh, get in the room, and it's like when you get in that studio session, niggas is over there. And this Gil was the first nigga I seen that went writing raps. Hmm. I never, I never knew that. I'm just keeping it. I can only keep it 100. Yeah. He the first person I seen in the studio was standing there and smoke a full, a whole fucking quarter pound of weed, <laughs> talk and all that shit, and then go in there and just go. Be like, like, I'm ready. Like, I'm ready. I think the first joint I ever did when I was like, the fuck? That nigga was just like, back then you just couldn't get on records with Gil. Right. That nigga wanted to hear your verse. Yeah. What you got? And you had to come with that shit, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And um, it was good. It was good back then. But I remember when uh, when Gil was on. I had got like a pre-release because I was fucking with Most Wanted. We had a pre-release of uh, the Ice Cube John that he did, pushing weight. That was that. That was around that time. It was around that time. And he he some something with the flame go. I'm gonna tell you one more time. Mm-hmm. Let the chain go. The chain and go. I was like, all right, cut this shit off. <laughs> like like that was that time he, because he had. He had something that nobody else had at that time. He had that yeah. flair. Even more than Jay, more yeah. than like a lot of niggas in the shit. game. He he had it to where it was like yeah. he was in these unconventional pockets and he was just rapping yeah. almost yeah. like he was talking. Yeah. That, that was the thing with me. Hey, I, I tell a story time. I almost got in a fight on, on this shit on the train back in the day. Really? Like some random North Philly niggas. <laughs> and I, we talking about figure shit. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, Gilly the hottest nigga. Like, no, Spade crushing. I'm like, he not hotter than Gil. And he just like, nigga, throw your hands up. And then just, oh, nigga, what the shit. fuck? <laughs> See, Spade yeah. and Gil, to, like, Spade and Gil was like, um, tag team. At one point, they was like, that yeah. shit was different yeah. for both of them. I think they, to me, they both was the best of me. Yeah. You understand yeah, I think the thing with Gil for me, like he just alluded to, was that the fact that it would almost like he would stop rapping and take a bar or two off yeah. to say some silly shit. Yeah, he'll say it. Yeah, and then come yeah. right back in on a whole other. So that was the shit I like. You know what I'm saying? And so. for me, they was, they was, they was the, he was the motivation at that time because. The nigga had like two, three record deals at that moment. Yeah, yeah. Going Suave up a House, brand new act, Vigor with the Rolly yeah. on and all that. Yeah, shit. Suave that House for a solo. Yeah. They had the Rough Nation Warner Brothers deal mm-hmm. for major figures. Yeah. They were selling sixty, eighty thousand, no telling yeah. of of the street version yeah. of Figures for Life. Yeah, sold that 
the for a million. Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot going on. Then, yeah, that's us went number one. Then they turned the deal down with the Black Friday shit, with the Rock Friday yeah. shit. And, and, and again, that's why I asked about like the time period because that time. that's the golden era of like yeah. Philly rap right there from like 97 to 03, 04 when yeah. everybody emerged. Because in that era, you get Bean's first three albums. Yeah. You get uh, the Philly's State most Property most first album. Major you get figures. the State Property movie, Major Figures, Philly's Most Wanted. Yeah. Um, you get my first mixtape, Cosmic Cavalry. You get Shit. Murder uh, Mill, Murder Mill uh, album. Oh yeah, Murder uh, Mill. Can't forget him. Sam and Lava ended up with Re Up Gang with the clip. That yeah. was a little later. Little oh, later. Yeah, that's the yeah. You right. Was that was a, that was a little later. But you don't get in this. <laughs> <laughs> nigga don't get no more credit. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you buy Lava and cool time. <laughs> <laughs> but you had Lava writing for Dre at that time. Yeah, Lava was doing this Lava shit. was, La- Lava. Lava would fuck with Mel, man. Right. Yeah. Yeah, who was Dre right hand. Yeah, definitely. So it's like, and a lot of people don't know, like, Lava is one of the most prolific ghost writers. Yeah. Composers in the history no. of rap music. To this day. To this day. To this, to this day. If, to this day, if Lava calls me and be like, if he walks in the studio and be like, you should change that line, I would change it. Yeah. I think anybody in Philly <laughs> she, yeah, she listen would change to Lava. the line if Lava come in and just be like, change that line. Like, you, it's like, I'm not even going to ask you why. Right. I mean, you like this one. <laughs> right. How's this? Yeah. Sound? And I think now, like, he's doing, like, shit, like, R&B shit. He's doing, like, a lot of different yeah. shit. You know no, Lava Don is that nigga, man. Yeah, he definitely is. That's a fact. He wanted them. So, um. Crazy era at that time. So, who, who. Were some of your early like collaborators and mm. like who did you you know rub shoulders with and start you know doing songs with and all of that then, um, in that era? Me Ablava, me Ablava, all of them. Me Ablava, Reese Rolex, and Dutch had a joint called Live from the Barbecue Remix. We had remixed that. Yeah. Uh, me and Bump did a lot of shit together. Um, that was my guy. Like, like Bump was, I, I used to, I can go pick Bump up for one Ocho and yeah. go in the studio and just go crazy at the time when they was on fire. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I always do whatever for Bump. Um, who else? Gil? Gil too? Yeah. Uh, I didn't, me and Beans didn't connect until later on. Right. Down the line. You know what I'm saying? But, um, me and Spade ended up, we didn't, we didn't connect later on down the line because we both went to jail. Got you. But, like, Everybody else, it was it was on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we were bumping to each other, see each other. We all rocked together. It was a different time then. This was back when niggas didn't have security. The security was on your waist. Right. And I'm talking about everybody <laughs> had them. From me, the Gil, the Spade, the, everybody had them in one room. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, and niggas could be in the same room at that time. You right. might got 30, you might got 10 rappers, and you might got 30 to 50 niggas that's not even rappers. They just street niggas that's wit niggas mm-hmm. from all different parts of the city, yeah. all in the same studio. And I think that's an important thing to talk about, because that yeah. shit could never happen now. No. Yeah. The fact that it was back, a ticking time bomb that didn't explode. Yeah. different time. Ba- yeah. Back then, it was a thing of, you represent your crew. You had to. And it was it was delineated from the leader right. down to the rest of the crew. Right. And... Whatever setting we in, so it's like you might have a crew of thirty niggas, and on a street setting, this nigga's the leader. Without but on this rap shit, this person's the leader, and everybody plays their position because yeah. we can't fuck this business up you because can. everybody was trying to transition from the street to doing something up. And the leaders was thorough. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like they, you know, something could happen in the club that Saturday, you blow like, oh, this shit ready get ugly, and then next Saturday you see those same dudes that's ready to get into it. They in a club together. Mm-hmm. You know, turning it up, but it's like they didn't teamed up. You know what I mean? So it's just different. It's just different, completely different from now to then. Yeah. What do you think changed it all? I I, I just see for me. It's hard to pinpoint like one thing. Nah, because you know you got some fucked up niggas out here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got you got a lot of people became bosses. I had to become bosses young, mm-hmm. meaning like. It might be 20, 21, right? And they got to take care of the family. Right. You know what I mean? They they got the position to go ahead and do it. They may not have the mindset, but they got the heart to go and do it. But they don't really, they, they morally not set up correctly. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now they're doing a lot of backdoor shit. Right. Niggas getting booked, they ain't getting niggas out. That's, you know, you got niggas that's just really just soldiers. Like, 
know yeah. what I'm saying? And, 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 and they do a lot of shit, and they don't know. Like, bro, don't do that. No, we just trying to get the money. Right. Nah, go take that nigga. Go, you know what I mean? And it gets, it gets ugly, and when they feel like nothing's coming back at them because people are just, like, so, like, afraid of them or, you know what I mean? So it's, like, it's just completely different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't, you can't tell a nigga nothing that's taking care of his whole family. Right. What you going to tell this little nigga that his folks just got dropped? And they going through it. They they right. been in Serena tag teaming back and forth. What you gonna tell? How you gonna tell him to stop right now? You can't. You can't. You gotta wait till niggas get tired. Yeah. When they feel like, all right, this shit. Yeah, you gotta let you gotta let you niggas purge saying? it out, and yeah, then you can't just make the decision and for just that. see if at the end of it, if niggas yeah. is like, all right, yo, y'all yeah. want to piece it up now? Yeah, you can't make the decision for them, and you gotta be careful with how you bring it up. Yeah, you know, might be like, now you in it, nigga. Like, you, right. You acting like you stand. That's a real nigga. thing. Can't stand for this, <laughs> yeah. nigga, man. This is real, real shit. Uh, another important part of your story mm-hmm. is is five. It's Fifty Cent. Yeah. How did you originally connect with Fifty Cent? Because a lot of people just think just one day you just started being around Fifth and yeah, y'all just been like best that. buds for fifteen years nah. and that's just it. You know, people don't understand. It's like um, I had a, a OGNs in the city that knew him from booking him. For um, shows, uh, Steve Brody and then my other OG, Philly Legends, uh, Big Champ. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, we we worked, we worked real hard, and um, I met him. And um, the first day I met him, I met him, I met Eminem, I met Paul Rosenberg, I met everybody. It was at the Anger Management Tour. The next day, he was having a a big ass pool party at his house. He invited us up, so yeah. we went. Um, it's crazy because my my um. My man Boona, Uncle Shy, he went up. Boona didn't go. Mm-hmm. Boona didn't yeah. go. A lot of people don't know that's Boona that got Stacker Star right Yeah, Boona, CEO yeah. of Stacker Star, former NFL running back, right, right, right. Curtis he Brinkley. Didn't, he didn't go. But we, we went up, and everybody was there. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. Um, me and Yayo got real tight first. Like Me and Yayo, like, gained a real uh, strong brotherhood relationship. And he was, like, telling Phil, like, yo, Cause Yayo came down for a show and he like, yo, bro, this is nigga in Philly, man. This nigga, we did a show. This nigga had like a hundred niggas with him, bro. Like, and he, he he a good nigga. So I met Fifth, but people don't understand. It's you don't just get in with a right. You know <laughs> yeah, you 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 don't come around a mob and then you just hang no, with the don. It don't, don't work like that way. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah, you my brother. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So over time, it just built it up, and it was like one day. Just was just really tight, you know what I'm saying? Went from me, put it this way, you couldn't anybody just get in the bulletproof truck, man. Right. The day niggas seen me get in the bulletproof truck, they said it's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Niggas don't he don't let niggas get in that. Right. You fuck with homeboy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we've been tight ever since. So a lot of times conversations don't be about music. Or with him, I would just really just study the nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I would just sit back and just I think I did that more than Anything for maybe a couple of years, I just sat back and just fucking listened. Yeah. Because just to absorb the, the energy and what he had to give. And I watched this nigga turn down deals. I watched this nigga make them make the deals better. I, I watched them do a lot of shit. You know yeah. What I mean? It made me, oh, that's how you do that. Okay. Right. It's interesting you say that because a lot of people be in positions like that and they be almost like too cool. Yeah. Or too thorough. Yeah. And it's like, no, like this is a mogul. Like, a why not mogul. try to pay attention to yeah. every little bit of advice or shit you can? That's. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I seen it all. Outside looking in, to me, Fifth Fifth is a real cerebral dude, like a real intentional thinker. Everything that he do, even when it seemed like he out of control, he's mm-hmm. always in control. Mm-hmm. What's some of the most like important lessons that you learned from Fifth in terms of like mannerisms, how to carry yourself, business tactics, mm-hmm. stuff like that? Shit, don't have nothing to do with music. I, I think for me, um, a lot of that shit I had. Cause I'm from the streets. Yeah. When it comes to that, I think what I learned from him was the business part of it. Like, you know, like it's okay to come from the streets, but why are you showing these people that shit? They gonna, they not gonna bring you the money like that. Right. Man. They gonna run away from you. You bring that bullshit around. Like even you see like certain shit he may do, it's not like what he used to do. Right. If it's not jumping out in the crowd like he did when he first came out. And punching every fucking body in the first row. Right. He's not doing that. You understand what I'm saying? So it's 
it's just knowing your position and knowing who you are and just watching that part of it. So yeah. for me, I think that's what I learned the most. I already knew how to move, you know what I'm saying? Right. In the street. But I think for the business part, the the transition from being in the streets to being in the corporate world is what I learned from him. Right. Yeah. And something that I, I noticed about Fifth shit over the last 20 years is that he's always been somebody that embraced the corporate shit. Mm-hmm. Went towards it, like, mm-hmm. and understanding, like, how to communicate mm-hmm. his sensibilities and whatever corporate shit he might have been doing, mm-hmm. whether it's the Reebok deal or vitamin water or whatever, whatever. Like, he never lost himself in the deal. He always made them build whatever it was around mm-hmm. him. He a genius. Yeah, straight up. He's a marketing genius. He sees, he'll see something in a deal that you don't see. He'll create it. He'll make it. Like, look what he did with power. He said it. He said, I was only getting paid. He said he was only getting paid, I think. It went from fifteen thousand to seventeen thousand an episode, right? Somewhere in there, and look what it turned into. Right, yeah. whole got the universe. whole network. <laughs> yeah, and he had to, and he yeah. had to kill himself off, right? Because he had so much other shit to do that he couldn't do it, right? So I mean, you know, yeah, because acting, <laughs> yeah, I'm about it. I got yeah. to die this motherfucker. <laughs> so I can start for right. I, mean, I got to die. Yeah. I got to get this money. Yeah. 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 Can't do this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Uh, something that I really uh, admire about y'all relationship, man. Anything that y'all you, that you got going on, Fifth just appears. He just shows the fuck up, like nah, yeah, out of the, out of thin air. Like yeah. he had the situation. He pulled up at the crib. He had the yeah. Lambo and the Bentley. Mm-hmm. That shit went viral. It was like another joint. You had like a day party or something. You was at on Delaware Ave. Mm-hmm. He pulled up, mm-hmm. and it's just like anywhere that you got anything going on, positive. Fifth, like all right, bet. Let me show up to yeah. support my man. And you don't see that from people in a position like his. Yeah, but I mean, you know. At the end of the day, people don't understand that when you gain a relationship, I, you don't owe me nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't, you don't owe me anything. You know what I'm saying? Um, but a chance. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I think that's what his whole thing was with me. By me going away for the, to seven years, he was hurt that I was going away. Yeah. Was like, damn, what can I do for this nigga not to go? You know what I'm saying? Because he knew what I was trying to do, and he knew I was so far away from the shit. But it was nothing that... Yeah, sometimes your past just catch up to you. Yeah, and it was like, yo, the lawyer, like, if he pays this, he can put some big possibility he don't have to go. So fifth looking at him, we got the lawyer on the phone, and I'm looking at him. I think it was like probably like 250000 or shit like that. And I'm like, nah. Mm-mm. And he's looking at me like, nah. I said, nah, I'm going to go do what I got to do because what if you pay this shit... Still, still gotta go, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when I come home, man, I can't get no check. <laughs> <Right. laughs> so, nah, I'm, I'm going to do what I gotta do. And we figure this shit out. Yeah. On the flip side when yeah. I come back. So, you know, yeah, it's, it's like, that's what I respect the most. And he didn't have to do that. He had nothing to do with what I was dealing with, what I was out here doing. So, you know, you know, corporate people in that, on the record labels, when these niggas catch cases and all that, they get the fuck away from yeah, them. Fast. Back, fast. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they not with all that. Yeah. You hanging with me? No, you can't even call him no more. Yeah, when, always... when, when Bobby Smurder and all of them got indicted, that shit yeah. was that shit went super cold up yeah. at Epic. Yeah. As soon as he, as soon as they came home, it's Clear Private Jets and yeah, yeah, yeah. coming to the building and yeah, yeah. Sylvia Roan yeah, and this man. Numbers, yeah. numbers was going up. You know what I'm saying? So I, <laughs> I, I know how that shit is, and it's like I didn't expect. I, I honestly didn't expect none of this shit. Yeah, coming home. You know, I, I, I really didn't. You know what I'm saying? So I had to kind of like catch up to it. Even when he came and get me from the crib that day, it was like, we went to go get something to eat and he like, it's time. Right. You know what you gotta do, right? Yeah. I said, all right. (laughs) Yeah, so, yeah. All right, man. This, 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 this is this is what we here for. My favorite part. (laughs) This is what we here for. Um, the G Unit Philly conversation. I hate them niggas. The G Unit Philly conversation (laughs) with Tone Trump is part of what led to me and you being on the phone for two hours, point counterpoint for two hours, like this was happening, but also this, and this is left out, and motherfucker forgot this, and whatever, whatever. Yeah. Let's talk about everything G Unit Philly. Mm-hmm. Who was initially considered for the group? Because that's a big <sighs> part of the history that people don't know was that this was your thing. Mm-hmm. And that you considered who was a part of this, and the final group wasn't the original consideration. Can I ask no, a question real quick? It was, it, was it supposed to be just a group or like a label situation? It was supposed to be. Um, it was actually supposed to be a subsidiary. A subsidiary, yeah. A subsidiary label, 
based around that group. Okay. And then everything was plotted out. Okay. Under that. Because you got to remember, at that time, Philly was so strong on YouTube. Right. Um, but we was one of the first on YouTube. Yeah, we was early adopters. Yeah, we on spoke YouTube. earlier yeah, about this. We was the first the on DVD World Star Hip Hop and all that yeah. shit. But um, Fifth and Yay and them loved a lot of rappers from Philly that they would watch like on YouTube. Like I don't want to say I'm saying I might not be saying too much, but it's certain rappers that he liked their verses. Like they're saying he could say it with them. Cause he liked it like <laughs> yeah. Vodka was one of them. Yeah, shout out like, Vodka. I gave Vodka. No, Vodka, Chili, Cheek Raw. Like these guys mm-hmm. was it. And um, the idea came from Yayo, along with Fifty co-signing it. And he was like, "Yo, you should get them niggas together, yeah, and create G Unit Philly. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying that'll be your thing because that'll be a, a launching pad a launching for them pad to be able to do to whatever do solos, else yeah, for all artists, yeah. And at the time, the Joy Jazz, the Reed Dollars, all these different guys. Meek Mills, I think, was Meek Mills was excuse me locked up at the time. Mm-hmm. Cause you know him and Reed used to, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I said okay, cool. So I came back, and this is fifty dot com was just created. So it was going to be a whole lot. Excuse me, it was going to be a whole lot of um things going on through there. So I came back and I said, so who can I get? So I had meetings with Reed Dallas. I had a meeting with Cicero before he was anywhere near game. Yeah. Um. Joy Jahad and Quilly used to be together at this time. Their right. relationship was a crazy relationship at, at this time. I remember that. I loved them two little niggas. Yeah. Like, well, when I say little, I mean back then. Right, right, right. Um, and like I said, Meek was locked up. Reed Dollars couldn't do it at the time because Reed had just came off of the Three Kings shit, and he did a deal with somebody. yeah. Put a lot of money. It's like an him. indie label, like whatever. Indie label. Yeah. So he was in the process of doing that. Cicero, weird ass, <laughs> turned it down. Yeah, because he ain't. He just was at that time. I got a lot. Of, he was just weird at the time. For <laughs> right. These niggas was coming to the studio, and I'm having these meetings with them. Yeah. Right. I said, I said, okay, cool. Um. Then, one day. Tone, I had met Tone Trump somewhere downtown. I had like met him at a, some type of event somewhere. Yeah. And I just liked his vibe. And then he wanted me and him to do a record. It was a drink like called Twin Towers or something like that. And we did it. And then when he came to the session, I liked him. I'm like, damn, you know, I'm putting something together. I'm going to holler at you. And he's like, all right, bet. Somebody had brought I Vegas to the studio. I brought him to the studio. I'm like, damn, I always loved Vegas, like, you know, from Frankfurt. Yeah. You know, they had the Red Brick thing. Mm-hmm. So Vegas, yeah, Red I mean, Brick I'm Syndicate. So, so Vague, our Vegas was literally the first member. Um, <clears throat> Then our Vegas was telling me about Cotty, who was his partner, and Red Brick. You know, Red Brick had like a whole crew. Yeah. And Cotty was one of them, and he was nice. Right. Right, and he came down, and his aura was good. Because I'm looking for niggas' vibes, and, you know, I'm from the yeah. street. They from the street. Right. They from the projects. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to fuck with him, too. Like, let's do it. He's like, man, let's do it. So it was me, Kyle, Vig at the time. Then Trump came down. And then Trump was like, shit, I'm with it. And that was it. So yeah. now I'm like, all right, we locking in. So now at the time, my OGT life, uh, loving to death, he had a studio on Delaware Avenue. He did records back in the day, for like Evelyn Champagne and, you know, the greats and stuff yeah. like that. But he still was doing, like, a lot of production. And, um... Downstairs was carving the Ivan at the time. So he was getting to a point where, you know, he's older. He wanted to be home more. Right. He didn't want to, you know. So he asked me to come in with the studio, and I would just pretty much take over the day-to-day bills and shit like that. Got you. And um, I was I was free to do, free and clear to do what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I had the studio. So my thing at the time was, listen, to, to the artists that I, you know, to all the artists, like, yo, this is home base. Now, the casino wasn't even there yet. Mm-hmm. We could right. walk out and just see a big-ass opening. Right. Yeah. Dan been there. <laughs> right? So, Dan been every Yeah, so <laughs> I'm telling you, like, this studio was 24 hours, the door was open. Mm-hmm. There was never no lights off. I don't care. Yeah. Whoever you brought was family. And um, I said, yo, we're going to do a mixtape. 
Trump knew Shiz Beats. Shiz Beats is the one that did Creep Miller. Got you. Shiz Big came record. Over, yeah. Big record. Shiz came over and had all of these beats. And I, when I tell you, we picking the beats out. I, I was the beat picker, picking all the beats out. But I knew at that moment there was something to prove to a lot of people because the, these artists, they were all nice to me, but they wasn't oh, to the city yet. Right. Red Brick was known. Yeah. But I'm just saying they wasn't. But they was known as a crew, not right. individual. Individually, like, yeah. get busy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But yeah. they were, you know, people knew them. Um, but I wanted the records to be in pocket. I wanted them to be right. So they would follow my lead. And I'm like, yo, we're going to use this beat. We're going to use this beat. We're going to use this beat. I would go in and do the hook. I would place the hook, and I'd be like, yo, you go here. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Niggas did their own verses. Yeah. Everybody did their own verses. But all hooks was Mike Knox. Right. Majority of every hook was Mike Knox. Um, so that means that for anybody that's not sure about it, that means you're producing and arranging I'm every record. Arranging. Every you're, record. you're not making the beat. No. But I'm you're arranging. picking the beat, but I'm you're producing and arranging. And, arranging. Yeah. and I'm sure you're doing vocal production, too, yeah. with telling niggas, change this, move this around. Well, I, I didn't really even have to do that. Okay. That, that, and honestly, that part of it, I didn't have to do that with them. Gotcha. Because it, it was like, I think the excitement from us just doing what we was they doing. They came with their best shit every they time. They came with their best shit. It was like competition in the room. Like, oh, he said this. I'm about to come like this. So I never had to tell nobody to change nothing in their verses and yeah. nothing like that. Maybe Trump, because he might have discovered or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, he used to do, like he said, he used to do nothing. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, why the fuck you say that? Take that out. Yeah. He's like, all right, we're going to take it out. For zero reason. Because <laughs> <laughs> we fucking having a great time, and you just dissed a nigga for nothing. Right? We having a great time. Yeah, I got to deal with this goofy shit, right? So, so that's how this shit would be. Uh, oh, baby, we're having a great time today. We just get started with these niggas, right? Look at the hottest ass. Cut, how you diss a nigga on a fucking female like me? <laughs> you don't want to diss this nigga this bad. <laughs> so um, that's, that's like how right. a lot of the a lot of the records was like like formatted. The verses was just everything. Now the creeping low record, people don't really understand the creeping low record. Explain it to them. The creeping low record, Ti had got booked. All the guns. Now, yeah. when I say this, it's gonna fuck your head up. That hook was based around T.I. getting booked. Mm. I got that 50 shot creeping, creeping low. low. I got that MP creeping low. Hey, yo, what up with T.I.? That all that was around that. That mm. was that. Got you. So I did the hook and I had the shit sitting for like two weeks. I'm like, ah. mm. so. The only person I had a verse on that record at that time was Cotty. But his verse didn't sound like a his verse didn't sound like a first verse. Gotcha. But it was a good verse. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, could I always format the, the songs? Who gonna go first, second, third, whatever, whatever? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> like the verse hot. And I would always just listen, 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 listen. But I, I didn't fuck with it. And then one day I just came in and I did my verse. And I still didn't, like, make my verse first. I said, somebody else can I do another verse every three. Yeah. Trump came in and did his verse. I Vegas was very mad about that record because <laughs> he didn't make the cut. Yeah. Not because he he just he wasn't there. He came and was done. Yeah. And, um... You're like this is this is wrapped up, big dog. This I started is moving. I, had, I was I was undecided between Trump verse and Kylie verse. I was moving this shit around to see what would work, and then because I was trying to be last, I was trying so hard on everything to be last. Yeah, because I was already getting so much play on the radio. I wanted them to get the play. Yeah, so you're trying, to try, trying to break artists. I'm trying to break them. I'm trying to put me here so they can hear them and come to me last, knowing that they would get to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it just it wasn't working, so I, I, I had to put me first. And then um, I had to fight between Kotick and Trump verse to see yeah. what verse would. And then I, I eventually got it. But the beginning of the song, the way it started, I said, we got to cut off all this shit in the beginning and just go straight into it. That's why you had to go, I got that 50 shot. There's no nothing else. Right. So it worked. Right. But when it went to radio, 
right? This is what happened, and this is the truth. <laughs> because that that version that you talking about is not the final version that blew the fuck up. Right. This is the truth about this record. I'm not going to throw some. I don't want to throw nobody <laughs> under the bus. <laughs> okay. The record was played at radio, and they never played the other two verses. Right. They so what played. you knew was going to happen, happened. Right. They She's only like, like we just talked about. my verse. Mm-hmm. Right? And I'm like, what can I say? I, I'm trying to get them to play the other two verses. Yeah. But they not play not. It's not catching like the, the first verse. Now, a call comes in about that record. Mm-hmm. Live on the air. This is how serious this record was. DJ Khaled was in Philly. Mm-hmm. I think he had a party that night. And he was Except probably at Vault. at Vault. He was listening to Cosmic Kev. And Kev was playing a bunch of stuff. And he was mm-hmm. playing uh, college shit. And he played Creep Alone. And he played it up to my verse. Right. And Khaled called him live on the air. And he clicked Khaled in. Yeah. Kev attested this. And Khaled said, Kev, you killing it tonight? But hold up. What the fuck is that Creep low shit? And Kev said, oh, that's Mike Knox. Yeah. So from there, it was <laughs> it's Mike Knox record. Because they never heard the other two yeah, verses. Yeah, so now it's, it's not a genius. But he's Philly not record going of... to be smart. He yeah. just Because he was only spinning out right. my verse to go into something else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, in the process of that record, I got booked. Right? I got locked up. I was going for like three months. This is where, where uh, Trump was telling you what he was telling you about. When he took the deal and... Miami. When he went out there and did yeah, yeah, that yeah. shit. Uh, so I comes home. So I'm like, they're like, yo, that creep low, that creep low. So I'm like, damn, let me do that creep alone. Me and Gil was was moving a little off at that moment. Mm-hmm. We had like a little, it was something minor. I think somebody said something to him. They like, you know how niggas walk in the room and hear niggas talking and don't hear the whole conversation? Yeah. And make it sound like I ain't fucking with them. Then they go back, report something. And go back something. and yeah. be a fucking weirdo. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was just weird at that time. And I might have said something kind of frustrating, but not nothing like, you know what I mean? And um, we figured it out because that's my bro. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I, he like that creepy low record crazy. I'm like, you fuck with that record? He like, yeah. I'm like, I'm going to remix it, right? Put Gil on it. And I put Ines on it. Ines was on fire at that time. He had the My Hood record and all that. Yeah, the My Hood mm-hmm. record. Now, I will say this. I had no ill intent by doing the remix and them not, um, the other guys from the group not being on it. Mm-hmm. I, didn't, I, I didn't look at it as I was being ill. I was just looking at it as keeping the record going because the record was still going to be on the new G on the Philly project. Yeah. Um, the video came. I paid for the video. You go to the video, you see every body that was somebody in that video from A.R. Ab to Meek Mills. Everybody was in that fucking video. Mm-hmm. We shot it downtown around, um, I think, Emerald City or some shit like that. Um, that record started to cause a problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because niggas felt like they were supposed to be on that record. You know what I'm saying? Not even, was it Trump? I think it's never felt away about nothing. He was always like, he just he's just a team player. Nigga, I'm here. I don't give a <laughs> fuck, nigga. Like we moving. You know what I'm saying? And um, I think the pressure of <clears throat> the pressure of Philly didn't Philly didn't want to believe that Fifty was fucking with niggas. They didn't want to believe that Fifty was fucking with me. And um, I was able to to take the pressure. Yeah. But I think the guys it was starting to bother them because right. they had people. It was like. That was a talk, that was a big talking point big talking, you in know the era. Of like, man, these niggas didn't sign themselves a G unit. The fifth right. don't know these crazy niggas. Yeah, and that, right. was <laughs> that was a thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And me, I was beating niggas up. <laughs> if I catch you, you talk that shit. <laughs> or if I heard, I'm find a way to twist you out, like and yeah. embarrass you in front of everybody. Right. So I was on that bullshit then. Like, yeah. I'm not proud of it now, but I was on that bullshit, and I was getting tired of hearing it too. Right. But we was moving right, and um, it was just about getting it where it needed to be. In order for him to speak on it, and you know, people could say, I could say, damn, he could have said something then. Right. But he had his own shit going on when he was dealing with this game nigga and all that. It was a lot. And then you still gotta make sure niggas is not gonna flip and do sucker shit. 
we Philly niggas. We wild. We right up yeah. the turnpike. <laughs> right. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, do I want to put these little crazy ass niggas on? Is they really see niggas gonna get locked the fuck up? And what happened? We start getting locked the fuck up. Yeah. So it's like, I, I understood. I didn't understand then, but I understand now. And people would say Mike Knox was the leader, bro. On, I wasn't focused on being no leader. I was always taught to be a soldier first. You can't be yeah. a boss before you be a soldier. So I looked at it like these was my brothers. I was just the older one. Right. You so was, was like, you was more seasoned. Yeah. You understood the assignment. You had the connection to Yayo yeah. and Fifth. But I was just being the team player. Yeah. But everybody looking at me to be this, I was really just being a team player. And when I'm saying, yo, don't do this and don't do that, yeah. it's because I know they don't want us to do this and they don't want us to do that. You understand what I'm saying? And it's like, it's a perspective thing, bro, because it could be a thing where it's like, you structuring a song, you got three verses. Right. You trying to put niggas first, second, you go last in order to get them to shine. And they looking at it like, oh, who this nigga think he is? He want to go last right, all the right, time, right, whatever. Right, 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 so it's right. like, this depending yeah, I, upon I, the mindset of the person. Yeah. I don't think hip hop really understand when the format of rap records change. Yes. Because we all come, like we talked about, we come from the era of going last means everything. Right. And Reservoir Dogs bar was hooks. great, but Jay took it to another level, level at the end. Benjamin's was great, but Biggie took it somewhere else at the end. Right. And it like, I, I personally don't even remember the year where it was just like, yo, Change if you it. not first, I don't you know. Last. <laughs> oh, you want it? Yeah. And, and, and that's it's, it's crazy you said it because the pressure of being last on a lot of shit, they didn't think about that for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I still had to. Because that was the unwritten rule. You got to kill it. If you're you going last you, and you, there's three rappers or four you, rappers, you got to kill it. You remember it. the yeah. A-Bay Bay remix when Jada went at the end? It was like that song yeah. was literally 12 different rappers. And exactly. Jada somehow found a way to, to like, bring it back up. Yeah, to like mm -hmm. take it to it. It's just that was what mm -hmm. it was. And somewhere along the line, it's just like, yo, first verse and the hook. Yeah. Be out. Yeah, and and that, and that, and that for me, like so, I you kind of got an unfair John in that situation. Yeah, yeah. and it's like I, I had to take a lot of I take I had to take a lot of hits with that shit. Yeah, you know, the Philly shit because the the other guys they they wasn't DJs or different. They wasn't so conducive to them. They wasn't, and I wasn't telling them that. Right, I didn't want to hurt their spirits. I wanted them, and that's why I was pushing them niggas so hard in the studio. Do this, do that, like. I don't care what anybody say. When it comes to Tone Trump, niggas never heard that nigga rap like that before. There was a record on on um, G on the Philly mixtape called O8P, right? And it was a Public Enemy beat. And I told him, I said, "Listen, I want you to fuck this beat up like bad, yeah. like bad." And he went first, right? His verse was so crazy. I made them go first. They played that. Yeah. That was, it was like, what's going on? Now, if you listen to that song, through the entire, I went last, through the entire song, I'm on everybody backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, uh, just so they can hear me. Yeah. So they can hear them. I want them to, because they going crazy. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I don't even want to rap. <laughs> I just want them niggas to hear them. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's when they started to take them serious like oh no nah, he he killed that shit yeah i'm the old ape play tough and get banged like a cd uh, uh, uh. he was just killing that shit like i'm like oh there you go all right come on now you open it up you right know? right but i don't think they really understood like what i was pushing for for them. i was really pushing for them niggas niggas wasn't really pulling for them like yeah that. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they how long was the whole process from once you lock down the four members, including yourself, to when it kind of all fell apart, how long was that? Mm. That's a great question. Um, I would say maybe a year and a half. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't long. No, it wasn't long. Maybe a year and a half. Maybe, maybe a year and a half. You know, everybody, see, what happened, <laughs> niggas, when we, when we formulated, it was just us. Was no managers, was no none of that. Yeah. Then we start getting noise on the radio. Niggas had three managers apiece. <laughs> like, what the fuck is this? This is my brand manager. This is my road manager. This is yeah, my yeah. manager this manager. This is my night manager. <laughs> <laughs> and they got new watches, chains and shit on. <laughs> niggas got cars and shit. Right? Now, we gotta go to New York. I said we gotta go to New York. I come outside. It's it's a like caravan. Yeah. Yeah. Where the fuck they going? <laughs> Oh, you know my man? No, 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 no. We 
You can't do it like that. So now I'm looking like the bad guy. Yeah, now it look like you trying to yeah, ex the manager yeah. out of this. Like you, yeah. you trying to do some big red yeah. record yeah. shit. 99 yeah. for me, yeah. for one like, for you. I mean, I don't even got a manager. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even got managers. I'm, I'm basically managing you niggas. And what niggas not even understanding, and this is just me from, you know, observing over the years, right. fifth the fairest nigga in the music business. Bro. Like, fifth is flat out telling niggas, Get with this lawyer. Get do with this. this do da, da, da. Yeah. Like he's assigning motherfuckers to you to protect you. Yes, it got bro. It got bad. It, it's, it got to the point where it's like now the managers is is, is is getting the niggas ears and man, fuck that. You do your own shit. You, yeah. Now this nigga, he want he think he about to go with Jeezy. This nigga, he trying to go with uh. Anybody from down south. Billy Joel. Like, this shit is <laughs> crazy. Billy Joel. Bruce, I'm Bruce like, Prince what the fuck? Like, <laughs> niggas is doing solo <laughs> CDs. We ain't even talking about all of them. Bitch, I'm doing my solo when shit. When you had time to record yeah. this shit? Yeah. They trying to record it there. <laughs> I trying to record this shit there. So it was just like, it was crazy. It was like, damn, nigga, we went from splitting 10 cheeseburgers and small fries to this. You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> we didn't get no bread yet. Like, y'all really like bugging the fuck out on me. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, the only nigga I feel like that never really bugged out was I Vegas. Mm -hmm. Like, he never really, he never really bugged out like that. So he could call me right now, I'd do anything for that nigga. Mm -hmm. But he never really bugged out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Trump just was ambitious. Trump dissed every fucking rapper in the city of Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally. Like, the funniest part is though, he said that. He yeah. Did. And he said the biggest thing was like, I can't out rap these niggas. Bro. So I gotta keep these niggas off. This nigga, <laughs> this <laughs> motherfucker, right? Let me tell you about this crazy nigga. Yeah. This nigga dissed every nigga, and I didn't even know. So now it's getting around, my phone ringing. Yeah. Nigga, yo, that nigga, da, da, da. Oskino. I'm gonna speak on Oskino. He disses Oskino. I don't know why he just to this day. I don't know why he just Oskino. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, Oskino is like my brother. Yeah. He like, bro, you at the studio? I'm like, yeah. He like, that nigga Tone Trump did. I'm like, why? Well, what's up? <laughs> that nigga Tone Trump did. They keep dissing me on DVDs and all this crazy <laughs> shit. I'm on my way down. Hold, hold on. I'm gonna call you right back. <laughs> he over there doing his verses. I'm like, yo, what's up, my nigga? He like, what's up? He just, you know, he look at me. Yeah. <laughs> For what? Because, you know, I'm a straight tour person. For what? I don't even know. I just be tripping. <laughs> Y'all got to fix this. Because this like my brother, and yeah. I'm just sending you my little brother now. Yeah. So it's like, so I call O, O come down. They... They talk, they squash it, they do like a little DVD block to get all that. Then, that ain't it. That ain't it. You think that's it? <laughs> you can't possibly think that's it. Not with this nigga. Like Charlie Murphy said that he don't disagree. Wrong. Oh, bro. he this is Gilly. Uh. He goes in a whole Gilly the Kid, King of Philly rent. He dissing this nigga on like 18 DVDs. <laughs> Find the DVD. And then I call him, yo, Gil called me, yo, this nigga told Trump. Like, bro, niggas was like looking for Trump like Trump was like fucking uh, one of them, like just one of them rappers that everybody wanted. Like, yeah. if I catch him, like at that point, he was one of them. Yeah. So I'm like, bro, you this Gil? He like, yeah, but that nigga my mentor. How's he a mentor? <laughs> What the fuck is you doing, bro? Like, you just dissed this nigga on 18 DVDs. <laughs> bro, you tripping. You gotta fix this, bro. They need a... That, he ain't wanna squash that joint. Yeah. He shake Gil here. I see all his faces. I feel like you just getting away with what I'm on. Bro, you dissed the nigga for nothing? You can't diss people for nothing. But I think that was his way of feeling like... Because he, he always was like a marketer. Like he, yeah. That was his way of trying to market himself. But He know, was, he, uh, you know, doing the P.T. Barnum shit, Barnum and Belly. Like, I I'm like, like, what the fuck? Got man? this like, going on. I got motherfuckers jumping through hoops bro, and all kind of shit. Bro, this shit was crazy. Then he just went, uh, like, I, I never understand his Cosmic Kev theory. Yeah, that was, that was one of, that, that was that was the first, when me and you jumped on the phone, that was yeah, one of the main understood. things we talked about. I never understood um, And you added a lot of color to the conversation. And... <laughs> Made me see the other side of it. Yeah. So, in your estimation, what's the root of the Cosmic Kev issue, and is it legitimate or not? No, it's not legitimate. 
Listen, let me explain something, right? People think because the relationship that I have with Cosmic Kev that I'm going to be one-sided in situations. They don't understand. It's times me and Cosmic Kev did not get along. It's times that me and Cosmic Kev was not speaking, but yeah. I just never been an internet nigga to a motherfucker that gave me a chance. Yeah. I would never disrespect that man. Mm-hmm. Not on no motherfucking internet. Right. Something that's going to live forever. I might say, nigga, fuck you on the phone, but I'm not doing that. Yeah. Because think about it. If you woke up tomorrow and you just go to your Instagram and you see me talking shit about Cosmic Cat, people be like, oh, shit. He saying it? Or like a Gilly the Kid saying yeah. it? It's like, bro, you. it's like, how do you do that? Right. Because now... Because of who the messenger is, it gives credence to everything everybody else right. ever said. So now it stirs up all this old shit from the last it's just thirty you years. Supposed to do that. Let me tell yeah. you something. Let's be let's be real. I'm gonna take it off a of, off of Trump because this ain't even about him. Let me say this part of it. There is nobody from the year of ninety seven, ninety six, or up to right now as we speak that plays Philly artists. Except for Cosmic Cav. Who the fuck else does it? Who? Nobody consistent. Nobody. No. Nobody. I'm not talking about motherfuckers get... Do you know how many people got record deals from that? You know how many niggas got hot in the street from the Come Up show? From the 8 o'clock mixtape? Just because... You got played and you didn't go and do your business and get you an entertainment lawyer and shop your deals and have the right manager, not the nigga that's putting money into you because he got a syrup block. He don't know business. He don't know how to structure to get you a deal. You can't blame the DJ. The DJ is just, he just moves the needle. But nobody in the city of Philadelphia would not be getting hurt if Cosmic Kev wasn't fucking playing them. You can't get everybody. Right. But that's a that's the he's point. He's gotten a lot. That's the point, is that you can't get it's everybody. Impossible, it's impossible. Bro. It's impossible. It's, it's what, 1.6 million people in Philly is 1.9 million rappers. Come on, bro. It's, like, like it's more man. rappers than people. Can't, bro. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, now you look, right? Every rapper, every rapper, and I'm going to say every rapper, include myself, we think every record is the one. Yeah. We think when we give a DJ this record, he's supposed to go crazy on it. What rapper don't want to hear his shit go back a thousand times and hear a missile drop and the music stop? This is it. Every rapper want to hear that. Right. But every record ain't the one, my nigga. It's not. No matter. I don't give a fuck what artist you got on the record. If it ain't it, it ain't it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So you can't get mad because this just this didn't go your way. You got to go back in, do something else, and keep going. And if you feel that way, it's other DJs. But to to get on the, to get on the internet and be dissing that man like that is crazy disrespectful. Yeah. To the entire city, and that man played him. He played him on records that I gave him that he was on with me. Yeah. And he played him when he had the record with Jeezy. See, in his mindset, he feel like, oh, you playing me now? I got the Jeezy record. No, nigga. He played you before that. You just didn't come with a record strong enough right. to make it connect. Now when you do come with something to connect, the relationship is ta- the relationship is tainted because you've been talking shit all this time. To the whole build up, you've been you you already So what you want yeah. a nigga to do? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like you gotta really look at people. And this is how I this is why I got so many great relationships in this shit. Because I tell people how I feel and I don't got to publicly tell them how I feel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes you ain't going to win a battle. You know what I'm saying? You're not right. going to win a battle. That's a crazy juxtaposition to be in. You got to give DJs respect. Like you a got to. You never put- just, just because it's like, like you just said, and let's be real, rappers... Rappers don't really take constructive criticism. No, well. they don't, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, they don't take that shit well. So it's like you say, if you got a record that you think is the one, and I, I just, I don't, I don't like this, or I know that this ain't the one. Now what? You know how you got a record that you think is the one, but you ain't even putting your own money behind it. What marketing budget did you put behind this record that you think is the one? Right. So why are you mad at any DJ that ain't playing it, and you didn't even put no marketing money behind it? 
with not, I'm YouTube, all this shit, all this shit out here, Billboard, you ain't put no money behind none of this shit, but you mad at a DJ. I think a lot of times rappers be waiting for some sort of a cosign from whoever they think is like some sort of valid source before they work it. And it's like, nah, you got to work your shit. Like you look at French Montana with shot call. I use this example all the time. Mm. That motherfucking record was everywhere for two years straight. He worked the fuck out of that record and he got it to a point where people forgot about it. It got hot again. Then you seen him with Jay and Kanye and everybody that wanted to sign him because he worked the record. And because French Montana was once, and I knew, I know French. Seen French in his travels of before he was even, you know, excuse me, signed and all that. He came from doing DVDs. Right. He had a strong thing in the city of New York of putting all of New York niggas on DVDs. Yeah. With the cocaine. Cocaine uh, city. City shit. Yeah. So he knew how to market. So he knew how to sit there with the label and say, no, nah, I want it this way, that. Or oh, if y'all ain't going to do it, don't worry about it. I'm going to do it anyway. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't, I, you, you can't get caught up. Listen, you can't say. Um, oh, they don't like the soul. Because one DJ say they don't like the record. That means go back and change it. But back to like, just like with, I just look at niggas when they be mad at Cosmic Cavs, like how? Don't get it. Yeah. You got to make this shit make sense. I mean, shit. And then from your perspective, you overcame a rocky relationship with them to get to, you know, yeah. where y'all are now. So it's like if anybody's if anybody could look at it as objectively as possible is you because you started from here and now, you know, y'all yeah. here. Y'all done had y'all issues, I'm sure, over the years. But fucking right. the, the basis of the relationship is is solid. That nigga done poured up to my house and I'm like, nigga, what you want to do? Because I'm tired of this <laughs> shit. Like, we done had some art. I'm talking about sweat. <laughs> oh, and I know him all these years. You know what I'm saying? So I get people frustration, but also, who else is playing the records? Who else is giving yeah. us that love? It was Kobe Cole, Cosby Kev, and Q Deezy. Yeah. They was giving the love. Right. Q Deezy is responsible for the Southwest and Capital Punishment and the yeah. most wanted. He was responsible for all of that out there yeah. to come to radio. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you can't be mad at these guys, man. Like, I remember when they stopped doing this shit live. They started pre-recording. They started pre-recording. You know what beef that was? State the property. The major figure state property beef. Yeah. After that, it was like, no. I was going to ask you about that. You know what I'm saying? It was like, no. Yeah, like, niggas, nigga, you be on the radio, niggas just be outside. Was you up there for any of that? No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Nah, I wasn't at the station for that shit. But I was around when it was going on, though. Outside looking in, when you hear Dutch and Speed freestyling, this Chris, this Neef, this Beans, whatever, whatever, and then Beans calling, Mm -hmm. what was going through your mind when Beans called that radio station and was just like, y'all know who this (laughs) Y'all know who this is, man. And then the shit just went off the rails. At that time? At that time. Um, of course I'm from North Philly. Yeah. At that time, Beans was an instigator to me. At that time. Gotcha. At that time, I feel like Beans and Gil could have stopped that shit. But niggas was young. It was, yeah. Yo, I don't, I don't really think at that time people really understood the type of power that niggas had at that time. Right. It was just in it. You know what I'm saying? Like. Now, like, look at all of them now. Niggas is grown men. Yeah, best of friends now. Mm-hmm. You know, we just was with Gil. Um, it's, you know, uh, God bless the dead, uh, Gil's son that passed away. We was, me and Beans was with Gil earlier that day before it happened. Damn. Like, literally at Gil's house. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just crazy to see the transition. But back then, it was serious. It was ugly because you had a lot of serious niggas involved. Yeah. You know what I mean? And a lot of shit went down. It was kind of crazy. All right. Yeah. So, <clears throat> kind of wrapping up the G Unit Philly stuff, man. Why don't you fuck with Kotick? Because <laughs> there's no pl- there's no better way to. I just gotta ask because made it very clear <laughs> that you don't fuck with him. I don't fuck <laughs> with him because he do suck ass shit, right? Yeah, that he goes through these spurts, these moments where. He gets caught up in a that nigga that nigga that nigga knocks motherfuckers. 
Or that nigga Knox trying to sound like you. We got both two distinct voices. Yeah. How the fuck do you even think that you sound like me? Or rap like me? Got you. Nigga, even if you rap better than me, I don't care. I'm here to get the money. Right. I'm here to get the sound money. I don't want my shit pulled out. I want my shit to learn. <laughs> right. You don't give a fuck about that. But you will be on Instagram and you'll say sucker shit. Like when they started the versus shit. Oh, yeah, I'll do a versus. And then, you know, me and Mike Knox would go back and forth and battle. Don't put my name in that goofy shit. Yeah. I ain't with none of that. I never had an issue with you. But you always had these weird issues because... You never focused on, you couldn't get nobody to really focus on your shit the way you wanted it. It's it's like a person sitting there and wanting the car that you that they feel you easily got. Right. And it's like, they credit ain't good enough to go get it. So now they fucking mad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's sad, but I, I, I'll never fuck with him. Because he did something else outside of that. Right. That was crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you go behind niggas' backs and try to go up to New York and have a conversation with niggas. When you say niggas, you talking about uh, with the label? Yeah. But how you do that? Yeah. These niggas know you from, from me, nigga. They don't know you from, they know you from me. You got you got to run me this story, man. You got, you got. You know what I'm saying? You got you got to run me this story, Knox. So, so he, you're, you're the plug, you're the connect. You got the relationship with, with Fifth and Yeo, yeah, whatever. And just one day, he just appears at the G-Unit office? I went there. I got the phone call. Yeah. That he was sitting in the car when the trucks pulled up because he couldn't get upstairs. Right. And, you know, he, he had a conversation with somebody. And I got the phone call. And he, like, tried to make it look like I'm down here, a little homie in these niggas. Right. Because I'm running around doing what I'm doing in the street, getting my buck. He let niggas get in his head talking about, oh. That's some music money. Fifth gave him the bread. He ain't break niggas off. What type of nick? Like, what are you talking about, niggas? Yeah. Like, you tripping. You don't do that. You come to me, you have a conversation. And then it's like, I really felt away because I really fucked with him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, in the beginning, I really fucked with him. And I sat back and I laid up off of him because I could have finished that nigga multiple times with that music shit. Yeah. And I used to tell him, like, bro, stop. But when you keep doing this and doing that, now I'm like, what are you doing? You somewhere fucking putting on the Eagles jersey, wishing you played for the Eagles. <laughs> that's, like, that's just the truth. Yeah. And him and Trump, they used to have little conversations. Like sidebar shit. Little sidebar shit. That's why when I seen the interview, what, what Trump was saying, mm -hmm. oh, you playing. See, what you're doing is you opening your arms, trying to give me a hug, swinging your arm and hit me with your elbow. I see what you're trying to do. You want me to talk about you. So you cut this up, put on your shit, and go, I know what you're doing. Yeah. Next week, you have a new CD out or something behind this shit. Because mm. I never talked about this shit on nothing like this. Right. And I'm doing this because I'm never going to do it again. Yeah, this is the one time. That's it. They can run. Niggas can start running and getting interviews from Camp Capones and all this. And they're going to call you too. Yeah. Got to fight me up here next week. <laughs> I ain't going to be mad at you. Let me talk shit. But I'm just telling you what's going to happen. Yeah. And if, if they were smart enough, go ahead. And I hope something prosper out of it for you. Because mm. I'm really done. Like, probably with this next year I am, I'm going to really, like, start slowing down with the, like, doing music. I'm yeah. doing other shit behind doing music. But yeah. So I don't really care, but nah, I never fuck with homeboy. And that's kind of where I want to transition to is MK to exec. I, I, I'm, I'm standing. I was going to yeah. ask, do you even still care about music? Like, do you still like got a passion for it? I love it. I love everything about it. But you don't want to be like rapping. I, I think I, for me, it's like I do, but I don't. I know when it's time. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm at a space now. Where I just want to help other people. Yeah. And that's kind of a hard space to be in because now it's like these young niggas, man, they don't get it. Yeah, they resent you for helping them. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> fuck you! Who fuck you think you is to help me? You bro, think you my big homie? They think, I look like I need help. I look like I need help. Yes, you do. <laughs> they think everybody's trying to get over on them. Right. Everybody trying to get them. Yeah. Right. You want me to? They read four pages of like a of uh, a the music industry book. What? Now they know everything. Like the minute they created this Instagram. I was gonna say it's social media. It made it bad because these niggas are get up and say your name and shit and all this kind of shit. Yeah. And I'm really, I'm really, 
I'm really in a, in a different place in my life. You feel what I'm saying? Right. The old might not just be like, Dan, Dan will tell you. The old might not. I would have haunted you now. <laughs> Been Still looking for time, you. I wait till you somewhere where it's exciting and everybody's at. Like, oh, they going to that event. Yeah, I'm going down there again. He gonna be there. You know what I'm saying? And I go just for that. Yeah, but I'm just not him no more. So it's like I just be letting niggas talk till they get tired of talking. I got the syndrome now. That I give you 72 hours. If it don't do, if it doesn't give any energy after that, if it just die out where it's at, then shit don't mean nothing. I can't go back and forth with niggas got a thousand views and I was going. Yeah, not doing that shit. I'm not. I'm not chasing that. So over over the years, um, you know, you had a huge hand in shaping the Philly rap scene. Um, you know, doing records, mm-hmm. producing records, all of that, and behind the scenes, you know, connecting people, putting motherfuckers on the phone, putting people in meetings, yeah. stuff like that. Let's talk about, um, you know, some of the artists that you worked with and helped over the years, like mm-hmm. outside of your immediate circle of people mm-hmm. that people associate you with. Jordan Banks, R&B artist Jordan. That's Banks. crazy. I got him signed to Jeep, uh, Dream Chasers right before. That's crazy. A lot of people didn't know that. Uh-huh. Jordan had a number one record. Yeah. Yeah, I had people chasing Jordan around. Yeah, Jordan had a number one, like like twenty like uh, no, twenty six weeks out of the year. Uh, no, he, he had a number one uh like uh adult AC record. Yeah, he um I had to come to fifty. Mm. He got two records with fifty. Dope. He got one called um Definition of Sexy. And then he got one called Winning Circle that I A and R that he's on on 50's album um, Animal Ambition. Um, he did that. Then he kept saying, "Y'all want to be with Meek? I want to be with Meek." And I'm like, "I don't think Meek looking for no R and B artist." Right <laughs> yeah, now. yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he just had it in his mind that that's he what he had wanted. It in his mind, so he wanted to be. And I called Meek on the three way, and I had Jordan on the three way, and I, I made it happen. And um, then they did their thing, but I ended up going in. Literally. Yeah. He took off. He out Cali now. Yeah. Him, uh, uh, I and art a record called Major Distribution featuring 50, Snoop, and Jeezy. That was on 50 album. Dope. I put Meek Mills in, uh, what was that name? Is it Keisha Cole? Keisha Cole. Mm-hmm. Together, they did a record called Zero. That was before I left. Um, shit. I did a lot of shit. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying But that's what I'm saying. But it's like, I want to talk about that because yeah, a lot of people don't give you your credit for for that part of, of the business. You oh, know what I'm saying? I put Beanie Siegel with 50 Cent with the go off record. Right. And that whole situation. Yeah. Why didn't that situation, like, 50 was very vocal about all of that. Like, mm-hmm. he wanted to do a co-branded situation with, with Beans mm-hmm. um, and with Freeway. He wanted to do, like, a G-Unit oh, Rockefeller well, he, thing no, well, with he, Freeway. He but Beans, 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 yeah, but, and, but Beans had, like, fell out with Jay. So that mm-hmm. was like a, boom, come over here. Yeah, but, but see, the thing about it, what people didn't know was, prior to Beans falling out with Jay, he had fifty had been offering him a deal. Got you. Before that, this was, yeah, this was early, right before I think he dropped all the above album, like right around. So this is like a uh, Rockefeller breakup time, then. Right, be literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was 03. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. the breakup. It was around the breakup time of the Rockefeller shit. Yeah, but at the time, Mac wasn't making a decision to go with Jay or Dane. He was just a free time. agent. He was just a free agent, I think, but he was just doing his shit directly on Def Jam mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. Jay. Um, so yeah, the deal was on the table because that's when Beans had, I think he had came home and they didn't know what he was going to do. Uh, whatever, for whatever reason that didn't take place at that time, but it got revisited, um, when me and fifth was in Philly and this was after me and Beans had our big thing. Gotcha. And, um, he asked me, he asked me, did I have his number? And I said, yeah, I got his number. You like you call him, and at that moment, I could have wore my heart on my sleeve. Yeah, I said, nah, Carl, I'm from Philly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I called him, and he came down. They did the interview and all that shit. And then he said, "Bring him to the office the next day." I brought him, and I told him to bring some records. He brought some records, and the go off record, um, Beans already had those verses on there. Yeah, he didn't have a hook on there. Mm-hmm. And Fifth was like, "I'm gonna put the hook on there." And he went in the studio, did a hook. That's how y'all got the go off record. What happened was in the process of that. Beans had the tax issue. Mm, got you. That came that he, it was nothing he could do. 
You know what I'm saying? You had to go away. Yeah. So that kind of slowed shit up. Some other shit, but that, that kind of slowed shit up. And um, that was kind of like the demise of that situation. Right. He was going in, and then I had got indicted in that process. That had nothing to do with got them. You. But it all took place, like, around that time. Yeah. So it kind of it kind of um, stopped that situation. Got you. Um, I saw your Cam Capone interview, mm-hmm. and on there you were saying that you were the one that initially connected Meek with Fifty. Because a lot of people don't yeah. re- realize, like originally, mm-hmm. Meek had offers from like Bird Gang when Jim Jones was at Warner. Mm-hmm. He had an offer from them. He had the Ti situation that mm-hmm. ended up fizzling out because Ti went to jail and G Unit wanted to sign him too. Right. So talk about connecting them. You know what I'm saying, and, yeah. and your relationship with Meek. Well, well, Meek had um. Meek had a relationship with Banks. I think Meek had did a record with Banks um, that never fruition, like it never came out. Got you. So, you know, niggas was, um, niggas was like on me, like, like they was on me or whatever. Yeah. And, um, I actually, I never forget this day, it was me, it was it was some serious people in the room and I was telling homie like, yo, this, this, Meek is the next one out yeah. of the city. And I never forget it. I poured up his performance on YouTube at Powerhouse. I said, when this nigga come out, it's like Jay coming out. Right. I said, let me get the fuck out of here. <laughs> right. Like, There's no lie. Yeah. And I poured it up and I pressed it and he looked and he said, get that nigga on the phone. And I got him on the phone. And then I called me like four or five times. He wouldn't answer. He wouldn't answer. And he called out like, here you go, right here. I'm like, yo, nigga, I was calling. He like, nigga, I was in the shower. He like, what's up? I said, listen, before I put you on the phone, I'm telling you right now, I want 20%. <laughs> right. Hey, about to crack the fuck up. Even my I'm man, dead serious. I'm dead serious. You, my man, um, my man Morales, that's at Def Jam now. He just got it. Yeah. He was in the room. He'll tell you. Yeah. And um, they got on the phone, but it just didn't. It didn't fruition. It didn't. It didn't yeah. happen. Yeah. You no, know, no, no bad blood. No nothing. Right, right. I think it was just the timing. A lot of shit was going on. And, um, it, it, it didn't happen. But yeah, I, I definitely did that. And I always, I took a lot of rappers up there. I took Reed Dollars to Fifty Cent. I mm-hmm. took. Uh, Cheek Raw to 50 Cent. I took, uh, shit, who else? It's just some more. Um, uh, Reed Dollars, Cheek Raw, Cree Forge. Um, Shout out for Always like Cree. Yeah, that's my cousin. Yeah. yeah. That's my... Um, I said, damn, bro. I introduced a lot of people to, to 50. Yeah. I really did. So, so many that, because I don't think about what I do for people. Right, you know what I'm saying I be so just trying to. It's get just what you done. do, like, yeah. Like my business man is like he tell you like a lot of shit. Like bro, you don't even be saying what you be doing. I just be doing shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's just me. I just seen you. Uh, you was on Facetime with Kevin Lyles recently. Yeah, that's my dog. Oh yeah. So okay. So uh, <laughs> so I get a phone call from one of my guys. They're like, "Yo, I'm at 300." I'm like, "Okay." He like, he said, "Uh, uh Oti Kwani up here. He in mm-hmm. a meeting with." Mm-hmm. With uh, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin Lyles. And I said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I said, all right. He got out of me. I said, Kev, said, call him. I call him. <laughs> Kev Lyles asked me. He said, I'm glad you called. What's up with him? I said, nah, he good. He said, he want us. I said, all right. But, you know, Kwani is different. Yeah. In a good way. In a good way. That nigga know what he wants. Yeah. Kwani yeah. reminds me of Meek in that regard of he know exactly he what, know he what he wants. He know what he wants. He know what he wants. Early too, See, and it's, I, it's, I seen it. Yeah. A, I seen it like a year ago. Yeah, I before before when he before he even put dog talk out. I seen right. it. I'm like, he's the next one. Yeah, he got a he got a unique look. Yeah, he got his whole neighborhood behind him, yeah. and he was mysterious enough, like how he was moving on social. Like he'd yeah. be on Instagram, he'd just delete a page, come right. back seven months later, right. whole new page, get eighty thousand followers in one day. Right. Like just, I'm like, no, he's he's got it. Like he, he got it. And, and the thing about it, I think the difference between them and a lot of artists that if they was popping right now, they would took they would have took maybe the first yeah. two deals. I was gonna say five or six. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but they would have sold everything. They had to gave up the publishing, <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 masters, yeah. the marketing. They would have gave yeah. everything, gave it all away. And yeah. he held out. And now it's like No, because what they not understanding with him is what they offering them, the nigga got it right there in the bag. Right. <laughs> so it's like you offer him these three fifties and shit. He riding around with that shit. Yeah. So it's like, nah. He got half a mil on his neck. 
I'm just I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> so it's like it's different when you already got some money, yeah, and these deals is being put in front of you. Now you can really look at the deals and see like is this the one for me? Right. You know what I'm saying? From right. my understanding, I think his whole thing is one of his main things when I talked to him because we had a conversation in uh, Shine Jewelers. Mm-hmm. Right. We had a conversation in. Cause I wanted to know what he, what he was thinking. Yeah, and he was he said to me he said oh geez like big homie like you know my 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 masters you know what I'm saying I want I want my masters you know yeah I want on, on my masters and I feel him you know what I'm saying and 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 don't get me wrong he may be wanting something too early in the game right as far as the game is concerned and how it is but you got to blame this on the industry. Because when you go on Instagram and you see on the internet so many uh, idols like the Jay Z's and all of them, the Yo Gotti's and all that, yeah. So it's like if y'all sitting in front of him and it's on his screen and saying y'all want y'all masters and y'all doing this, right. what you expect him to do when he's sitting in front of you and you trying to give him a deal and you saying you want this, that, and the third? He's saying, well, you saying right, <laughs> you want your masters? Why should I want mine? Right. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like OT Seven Kwani a lot, man. He's um, he 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 got all of. It. He got his own sound. How he mi- how he mixes vocals, all of that shit. Like is is it's a hundred percent him. The three people that I like right now, as far as rappers, is OT Seven Kwani, mm-hmm. uh, 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 Skrilla, and uh, Rob Foreign. I'm not familiar with him. You gotta get familiar with him. What's the name again? His name is Rob Foreign. Where, what part of the city from? Uh, he's from down north. Oh, from north. Yeah, he 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 he, he, he a little he a little different. He next. Nice. Yeah. What about uh tour? Have you come across his music? I like tour, right? I like tour a lot. I got a record in my catalog from from tour. Oh yeah, some some old. Yeah, I, I love I love I love what tour doing. I just feel like they they need to go harder with him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I like the I like the female rapper, um, K Glizzy. Yeah. Like her, yeah, she making a lot of noise. Of course, Rocky. I'm ready to see what Rocky gonna do. Yeah, yeah. She just signed to some of my homies and them over at um Big Money Records. She did something with them. Oh, she did. Yeah, she did something with them. They had a Republic, right? Yeah, they got something big coming. Um, Stack and Star was doing his thing for sure. Something about uh, Boona is a friend of mine uh, and Big Champ. Um, those are, those are my guys, man. They used to come to after midnight on on Fifty Third and Market, just hang out mm-hmm. with us and just talk and you know what I'm saying, just hang out all night. All of them guys and you know Life Brown and all of them. Yeah, like, and um, yeah. something that I like that Boona is doing in a press release for Stacker Star about the label. Mm-hmm. He talked about the fact that he's educating these artists about being financially literate and putting them in a real estate game and, you know, creating ownership for them outside of what they doing in music. And you don't never hear no ex- music executives let even me, talking me, like that. Let me tell you the, 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 the wildest, craziest, illest shit about him, right? Do you know that his art is like, when you look at these 30, you, you, you see them, right? You see how lit they are? Yeah. Do you know he had them since they was here? Yeah. Like, he raised them up. I mean, he got pictures mm-hmm. <laughs> of when they used to take them on bus trips and shit like that. These kids is from his projects. Yeah. He didn't go and get, he went and got, and like, he has a, you know how every label have that thing. He has a thing with his artists where he don't make them do what they don't want to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's coming from, they came up how he came up. So mm-hmm. it's like, if they don't want to do it, I'm not into forcing them. To do something that they don't want to do. Right. Now, if they was just doing some bullshit. Right. And he's going to say something. But <laughs> yeah. to just have them do. i never seen no shit like this like before. The shit yeah. that he do for his artists. The shit that he do for his label. The way he goes so fucking hard. It's unprecedented. That yeah, his, 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 unbelievable to me. Yeah. His rebrand is. It's, it's almost like he wasn't Curtis Brinkley. It's like he's just been a record exec for like ever. Like it's been kind of decent to see. He moved real regal. Re- like, yeah, like it's not the, bro. like it's he almost like he wasn't like a running back. It's like it's just he's been like almost like a. They don't make him like him. Yeah, it's I'm crazy. You, he moves so different, and you 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 know I've helped a lot of people. He's helped a lot of people, and he don't even speak on it. He could yeah. never get him to speak on right. shit he's done for people. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm telling you that because we be together every day now. Yeah. To see what he does. On the day to day, how he go at his artists and go for his company, that shit is 
That shit is unbelievable. And the thing is, Boone is so rich outside of music, it's almost like he's giving the artist they whole, like, whatever y'all want to operate, whatever y'all need to do, take that because I'm already set up in life. I already set my life up the right yeah. way, so I ain't got to manipulate nah. or try to rob no nah, artist in order that. to be successful. No, nah, he, ain't, he ain't doing that. And it's like, he said to me one day, we was watching something, and he was like, Bro, you know what I want to do? I want to get a jet and take all my artists to Dubai. I said, nigga, where I sign? Yeah, <laughs> and I'm about to sign the stack. <laughs> Give me a little 18-month yeah, deal. Come on, man. We, we going there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, who thinks like that? Yeah. Who thinks like that? But it's like, um, and I, I, I tell him, like, bro, you got to kind of get in front of this shit. Yeah. When you look at these these labels, like, you, you see the faces of them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he don't even be trying to really... Right. At all. I've been, I've been begging him to do an interview. He Man. won't do it. <laughs> no, no. He, <laughs> he won't he, do he, it. He, he, you might get him if he, like, just there. Yeah. But he ain't going to do no whole. Yeah, I bumped like, into him at the uh, at the Sixers game uh, a couple weeks ago, him and Chant. Yeah, that nigga He's, like a bird, man. And, he ain't doing that shit, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He ain't going to do that shit, bro. And it was crazy because I remember a couple years ago, um, mm. Young K.A., his first artist. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. The one that signed to Inner School. Oh, nigga, let me tell you. Oh. <laughs> I, did, I did his first concert. I had, uh, it was him. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, it was him. It was D4M before uh, Skiano died. So it was okay. Sloan and Ski together as a okay. group. And then I had, it was 42 Doug was closing, and then it was like somebody else or whatever. Boone and them brought a bus. Yeah. <laughs> they brought a bus yeah. of people from Abbott. It was like 60 people on a, yeah. on a, on a, on a charter bus. Yeah. <laughs> like All from Abbott. Yeah. They, yeah, they brought everybody. Six flag bus. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then half of them was on stage. <laughs> Did you see it? I'm like, where is yeah. everybody supposed to go? They're like, no, nah, this is a movement. We all on stage. I said, all right, man. Did you well, ever fuck go it. to your Abbott for a day? Yeah, hell yeah. It's unbelievable. My first time there was the one that passed. That shit looked like the stage looked like a mini powerhouse. Yeah. So what the fuck? You did all this? He's like, yeah, I do the same year. Yeah. Like, calmly. Right. Ain't calling no press. Ain't calling. None come, of that. They come. It's the projects. It's like they out. They love that nigga. That nigga like the bird man of that Yeah, he's, he's a real neighborhood hero. He's, like, he's really the bird man of that. Of that. Yeah. Like, and, like, even, like, when he do, like, like he got a coat drive today. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact. This nigga... A go and buy <laughs> every coat. Right. You'll buy every coat and get that shit out. You ain't really getting too many people doing. Nah, man. Boone is different. Me, Boone and Ch- like, yeah, literally. literally. Who the yeah. sponsors me? Yeah, yeah. like literally. Yeah, Boone, Boone, Boone and Big Champ, man, they just different type of guys. No, man. definitely. They definitely. just different and type Champ of played guys. played a major part in my career. You know what I'm saying? Like running around from the beginning to get to that shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. He, a lot of people. A lot of people know behind closed doors. Like, right, right, talk right. To him and he gonna tell you what to do. Yeah, to get you where you need to be. It's real, man. It's real. So in the beginning, I talked about the fact that you had one of the biggest going away parties of all time. <laughs> you had to sit down, do a little little time, man, like six and a half, seven years or whatever. Um, what was that o- that overall experience like for you? You know, being in the feds. Did it make you grow up? What did you learn? What did what was affirmed that you already knew? What was that whole you know time period like for you? Mm. I would say um, the first night was the worst night. The first night was the worst night mm-hmm. because prior to me going in, I've been doing time and out of jail all my life, so I think I didn't take it so serious as I should have. Because I'm thinking it's gonna feel like. It felt before. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the difference was I had a family now. And you know what I'm saying? All these different things going on. Um, It didn't really hit me until that night. When they, when the cells got shut and the lights got went low. And I'm like, oh, shit. I'm really in here. I'm in here. Yeah. I'm seven. Where, where was you at? Um, Canaan, Petersburg Medium, uh, Fort Dix, then Fort Dix uh, Camp. And they kicked me out. Then, oh yeah, I got kicked. Oh, out. you was on tour. Yeah, I was on a bit of a tour. Um, it's had too much influence in the jail. I had to go. Oh yeah, so they was... kicked me in Southwest T out. Big me. Oh, brother. from the same jail. Yeah, my man. <laughs> he kicked us out. We kicked us the fuck out. What's te- What's Terry like, man? A real one, to the core. Yeah. Like real one to the core. Well, we was in a hole together, and uh, we used to talk through the vents. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, real one. That's my guy. 
So what? So so when they say you had too much influence over the jail, what does that mean? What What was you in there doing that they felt <laughs> like, all right, this nigga gotta go, like, because they don't just give you that title. Allegedly, uh, allegedly, okay. They were saying I was selling phones. And, oh, okay, got it. You know, what I, mean? I was. They said I was. They said you, you was. Uh, money, you you, you was Best go. Buy in the in the. In the nah, I was like Apple. <laughs> 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 well, Best Buy I was Apple, baby. You know what I'm saying? Allegedly, yeah. You know what I mean? Phone, I, I hear them phones go for anywhere between a stack I mean, to two thousand a pop, like, man. They like no business this week, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what y'all doing? <laughs> like, can't come up this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? It was just, um, yeah, they, they feel like we I had too much influence. You know, there was a lot of people that went through that process, though. Yeah. You know, when you got a name and you go in them jails, man, they be watching you. You know what I'm saying? Listen to your calls and all that crazy How shit. How long did you do all together? All the dev, all together I did six and a half, seven. I don't feel like it was. I mean, I'm great. You yeah, know. I know sure, it did. Yeah, I sure you felt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I felt it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. If, if I, the first, the beginning was slow, the middle was moving, and the end just kind of slowed down. Like I think it was, I was getting so close. Yeah. You know but yeah, you know, I did a lot of time in the hole. I did like nine months in the hole. Uh, I had to fuck a few niggas up. Right. You got to get busy behind Yeah, gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to get busy. So was so you was, you was in a fez, right? Yeah. So was you in a uh, like a low, a medium, or a bounce? I was in a medium. I was in a pen for a second, then a medium. Then I was in a low. And then I was in camp. And yeah. And I kicked out, but they put me back in. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, was, it was, I think, one of the most serious moments we had. What people don't know about the fez, people die in there. Like, literally, like. They camouflage it. Yeah. Or well, Dan tells us all the time. Yeah, or I don't yeah, because Dan know. Yeah. And Dan I, I think people don't understand really how serious that shit is. And um it's a lot of racial shit in there. Cause it's cars. You got super racial. You got if you from Philly, that's the Philly car. But depending on where y'all at, if you if you if you uh on the West Coast, you in the East Coast car. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, Philly car. Right. So it'll be Philly, da, 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 like all of that shit. But like in Fort Dix, it was the Philly car, it was New Jersey car, it was New York car, Baltimore, DC, mm -hmm. and um when you go anywhere in the in the federal system, DC is the worst niggas to have an issue with. Yeah. They every fucking way. And because I they should have a lot of DC because they should is automatically federal. You get Automat banked for something in they DC. Get caught with a fucking <laughs> DUI. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't lying. But when I tell you, nigga, at least three hundred of them niggas is in one jail. Every jail. You go through it with them niggas. They not faking. They not playing no games. They working. You getting stabbed. Mm -hmm. So be ready. Like ain't no no. It's going down. Baltimore like that too. Yeah. Baltimore sometimes aligns with DC. And sometimes they don't. And sometimes they don't, depending yeah. on the numbers or depending on what, what Baltimore niggas is there. Yeah, what went on before they got yeah, here. You got the BGFs and all of that. Like I know yeah. a lot of them niggas. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's a lot of good niggas in Baltimore and in DC, good men that I fuck with. You know right. what I'm saying? So, you know, just knowing the history of it, and you got a lot of old timers from D.C. that was getting major money mm -hmm. that had been in the system for a long time. Like, I was cool with a lot of people from Michael Frey camp that they say Alpo killed. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, one of the BGF leaders, two of the BGF leaders was my niggas that one was an old head, one was younger, my man Bone, he home now. Um, bro, it, it, was, it just was a lot. But one of the times, it's real racial, the black and white and Mexican, that thing goes on a lot. Yeah. And we had an issue one time where it was, us against them, and it was literally, and this was this this one wasn't even in the media. Us against them is blacks versus blacks and Mexicans. Yes, okay. And we was in Fort Dix at this time, and this is no exaggeration. Fort Dix hallways is literally like this, but each building has, I want to say, don't give me the lying, but this is really true. No more than three hundred fifty people in one building, mm -hmm. right? There's no cells, there's rooms, there's dorms. Okay. So just imagine. All of these Mexicans on this side of the hallway and all these blacks on this side of the hallway. And everybody got knives. Right. People dying. And they ready to die. Yeah, people but, dying. But my dumb, crazy ass got to be the one to step up and stop the shit. Because <laughs> I got relationships with the Mexicans. Right. Doing shit and shit like that. So I pull them to the side. Like, bro, let me know this shit ready to get. And they got stopped. 
You know what I'm saying? But it only take that second, and it's up, and niggas is going to get hurt. Yeah, back. because with your level of influence, if you say, fuck it, we going to war, yeah. then yeah. now 100 people die between yeah. both sides, and now the jail's locked yeah. down for however the fuck long. And people will sleep on a spot like Fort Dix. That's the, you could get really seriously hurt there. Yeah. I seen niggas get punished in their sleep. I seen niggas get kidnapped, tied up in the bathroom, all kinds of, <laughs> this shit is real. I can't make this shit up. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, yeah, like this shit is real, man. It's like, even in the mediums, like the, the mediums and the pens, they're getting killed. Guards are getting killed. Like, so it's like, if you got people in there, check on them, send them a letter, man. Send them a magazine. That shit keep them out of the way for the day. You know what I'm saying? They live to see another day. Right. Well, go visit them if you can. You know what I'm saying? It's real. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, seems like a different lifestyle. It definitely is. Yeah, I I, I, I was uh, powerlifting. I was uh, working out with a guy. Uh-huh. Who, yeah, this was before I fucked my knee up. But I was powerlifting uh-huh. with a guy who did time in jail. Uh-huh. And he was like, yo, you you big nigga, man. You solid. You strong. You man, you'd have done some damage upstairs. I'm like, no, I, I don't know. Uh-huh. I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> he recruited no, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, no it's like, crazy because when I walked in, I looked at him. I said, man, like, he did like <laughs> That's a big nigga. <laughs> Like, he did 18. No. Like, he liked me. He was smiling at me. No, it's, it's, it's funny as shit. I said, this nigga, this nigga might be told Trump. Man. Oh, what, the what the fuck? They just set me up. Damn, what's going on? Call him out. We, I, this is when I had a crib down Southwest. Who was living next door to me. It just moved in the block, whatever, whatever. Right. And uh, the pipes in the basement had froze. Uh, and he was like, yeah, man, my brother just came home. Who you doing work? Whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, and I was like, okay, yeah, cool. You know, you the motherfucker just tell you that. He's like, whatever. He's like, and he's telling me a little bit about his brother. Like, yeah, he did 23 years in the fizz. And uh-huh. he was the weightlifting champ where he was at. And did, and I'm thinking like, oh, all right, whatever. Just tell him to come through. Right. Next day, doorbell ring. My man look, look out the door, and it's this humongous nigga out on the on the, the steps. He like, yo, I, I ain't opening this door. I don't know what the fuck going on. And old head, like, he was like nervous as shit. So I come to the door. I open, it, I open the door. This month, like, okay, okay. he like, yeah, my brother told me. I'm like, oh yeah. And he came yo. When I tell you, this nigga was like, he was bigger than me and was just solid muscle. Wow. And he was telling me where they was at. They took the weights. From the, the yeah, prisoners. Yeah, they'll do that. Because they literally was like, motherfuckers were getting too strong. No, yeah, yeah, do that. And sometimes when they take them, they don't give them back. Yeah, he was like, they straight took the weights because it was like, yeah. It's they like, get too big. They're bigger than the guards. The, the nigga said, and I got to the point where I was benching 440, and that's that's a lot. But he said he 440. was. 440. Yeah. He Dang. said, yeah, this is why I was like at the height of it. He said he was benching 515 and he could do 16 reps. And I'm like, get the, what? No, bro. They be it's like, what do shit. you do with that when you come into work? You was at Old Country last night. It's like, <laughs> Listen, what the bro. fuck do you do with and let me tell you, and Let me tell you what's crazy about it, though. You got a lot of them guys that's in the feds that work out every day, and they cover their shit up. So you don't even see yeah. right. how cut up Yo. and ripped up they really he is. Dog. They wear big sweats. They shit be holes in it and all that. Dog. But you see it when they got to work. When they got to right. put some work. <laughs> yeah. Dog. When Come I tell you about that, all that this shit. This nigga arms was like 25 inches. Like, it was just like ridiculous. I was Listen, like, God I damn. seen some shit. I'm going to tell you this one story I seen in the face. I want the youngest to know about this. There's this guy in there, right? His name, I will never forget him. His name was Penitentiary Monk. <laughs> Sound like a nice guy. Yeah, he's been here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> his name is Penitentiary Monk. He had like these little braids in his head. He was in. Petersburg medium with me. So they would have like talent shows. They used to always try to give me the rap to the talent shows. You know I never did it. Right. I'm, I'm not doing that shit. So they had the talent shows so some niggas would do comedy and some niggas would do like, performance, whatever. Bump used to be a rapper in his day. Uh-huh. Bump got on the mic and the first thing he said was, this is the first FCI medium that I ever been to. Did you hear what I said? That means he only been in penitentiary. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's why his name penitentiary. <laughs> right. He said, I just want to do my shit. Right? He put the beat on. He rapping. He sweating. This nigga rapping for probably about 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, no lie. I can't make he this shit. He took over the challenge. <laughs> yeah, he just going. He just going. So this comedian nigga talking that shit. Yeah, it's not time right? that. It's not that time, though, bro. Like, not right now. It seems like a let, bad let idea. Let penitentiary yeah. bump get his shit off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So bump get done. He cut. He cut niggas laughing because he cracking the jokes <laughs> and all that. So bump tell his man, you know, tell him, don't no, 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 stop playing with me like that. He like, bump, he's just joking. All right. They call for us to go in. They do count. Now, it's, you know, it's child time. We yeah. go out for child. After child, you go to the yard. Niggas in the yard. Penitentiary bump. Come back out in the yard. And 
grabbed that nigga by his collar and stabbed him in his fucking face 30 fucking times. I'm talking about this shit was unbelievable, bro. Like, it was, and the guards, you got see these guards that been in the system so long? They've yeah. been at different jails. They know him. Mm -hmm. So he's just like, bumps, stop. Please stop. Please just stop stabbing <laughs> him. And then they grabbed him and took him to the hole. Yeah. You got some guard, they not risking their life. No, right. I got tickets to go see, you know, Maxwell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. BDD like reunion tours <laughs> tomorrow. It's crazy. Yeah, like I'm getting in the middle of this. Yeah, so it's like, you know, when you see shit like that, and and, and, and like I said, you know, me, I'm going I'm to handle with, you know, this mm -hmm. type of yeah. guy. So it's like certain situations, when it's, when I first got there and it's time to pop off, niggas is like, huh, I'm like, what, what, what's, what the fuck is this? You know, it's bang out time. They're like, oh, no, it's knife work in here. Dang. Mm -hmm. So you tell me, I'm like, I don't want to kill a nigga. You know what I'm saying? I beat the shit out of him, though. But mm -hmm. it's like, what if I puncture a lung? <laughs> yeah, no, add an L fall. to your six. Y'all know I'm trying to do you. Know, I, don't <laughs> to about it, <laughs> nigga, I like pussy. I got something home. Like, I can't. Like, I don't want to do you niggas. Y'all niggas ain't fighting over porns and all this stuff. Yeah. No, I want to go home. Take that nigga back. Uh. <laughs> Yo, I told him I seen niggas in a barbershop one day arguing over who was next in the chair. And the and the nigga said, Yo, my man, like let it go. I'm jail ready. And everybody was like, What what the what the fuck do that even mean? Mm -hmm. He's like, I'll go tonight, nigga. I can do a good eight. See? I'm like, just let him get the kid. Let him get that chair. <laughs> he ain't got much hair. Just like, <laughs> like, what do you say after that? Like, what, like, what do you, what, yeah, what do like, you say? Like, and the crazy thing about it is I watched the comments dudes that don't, I'm talking about dudes that they just go to the law library every day. Right. Those be the ones. up, and it's like, why did you make this nigga man? Listen, this is no lie. Last story on the jail <laughs> shit. My man, Cortez, I don't know where he at right now. My man, Cortez from D.C., Loving, loving to death, bro. He was a fucking warrior behind the wall. And a Philly dude had just came. He worked there two days. I'm in my, my jaw sleep. I get up. I just came from work. But you got to work in the jail. I don't give a fuck who you think you is. You're yeah. getting a job. Mm -hmm. You're getting a job. You know Dan don't want to fucking work nowhere. He, work. <laughs> <laughs> he probably was in the kitchen cooking yeah. the shit he shouldn't be cooking. Dan you know, you well, Dan. That's my fucking man. That's like my brother right there, right? So, so uh, the nigga, um, <laughs> they passed each other in like, the, in, like, the library. Yeah. And they locked eyes, right? But the new dude thinking he got to be tough because he, he knew. He really scared for real. Right, right, right. You know, he, he don't understand the car shit, how can't nothing happen to him like that. And uh, they came, so I, I came out, and they was like, yo, Cortez looking for you. I'm like, well, what's up with him? I come out for child. Cortez is up against the wall waiting for me. I was waiting on you being home. I said, what's up? He said, listen, man, the new boy from Philly. Because when somebody new coming, it could be 1,800 motherfuckers. A new motherfucker is a new motherfucker. Yeah, we know yeah. you. He said, he gave me this look. I'm ready to work him. I said, Cortez, you can't work the nigga. He don't even know you. <laughs> yeah, but he, he might he might have got a, a kite from another nigga at another jail to come Might be a nigga. hitter. <laughs> I said, Cortez, this nigga just came from the street. Yeah. I said, yo, come here, man. Come here. Yo, why you... He, no, 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 it wasn't like that. I, I wasn't looking at him. Please, don't look at this boy like that. <laughs> please don't look at him. Please, man. Brother, please, please, gonna please brother. you your fucking face. Like, this boy, like, no, it's going to start a whole thing. Yeah. Then like, on the D.C. Listen, I got so cool with D.C. because I think I was a little, little ball player when I was first. <laughs> I got a little skinny. Yeah, right? yeah. So we playing ball one day. Motherfucker from, like, uh, I forgot what, what city he was from. But I went up for a little layup. Nigga bumped me and I fell. The whole fuck, you the thought I was from D.C. The whole D.C. car came on the court. But I said, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Whoa, don't stab nobody. <laughs> this ain't what I'm here for. It was a personal foul. It was a personal foul. He personal said he saw it. He didn't mean it. Yeah, brother, please, tell him you saw it. <laughs> Come on, bro. Get out <laughs> but Sub, that, yeah, sub. These guys been in for years. Yeah. So it's like, you know, they look like, man, you know, that's the ball right there, man. That's the... No, 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 no. D.C. and Baltimore is different, bro. Yeah. yeah. So, enough about jail. Please, thank but you. But you're coming you home. Turned into A&E real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, real fast. Scary straight. Your coming home was epic, though. <laughs> Fifth had you looking like Big Meech came home. You had the motorcade. You had the family there, the fresh lay, the video crew, all of that. You went viral. Talk about uh, 
MK coming home, man, from doing that six and a half, seven. I felt. Yeah. It felt really good. Uh, I was blessed to see my kids, you know, my family. Everything was good, man. Um, I didn't know I was going to do music. I had plans on coming home and getting a job. What was what was uh, Mike Knox the the job going to be? I had no clue. Whatever they was going to have for me. What year did you? What, what year was it when you came on? Two thousand nineteen. Nineteen. That's what I thought. But so many people kept telling me that I need to do something with my voice. So the whole plan was for me to do um, voiceovers for like movies. And yeah. Movies. Listen, I, I I said that shit years ago. I'm like, you Beans and Ross could straight up do like uh, narration. Narration. No yeah, bullshit. Yeah. I mm-hmm. said that shit years ago. Yeah, so so that was that was the plan, and then um, I said, man, fuck, let me go in the studio and see what's up. You know, yeah. I started fucking with it a little bit, and the shit started working. And start, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I started going at it, and then you know, Fifth helped, and Yay helped, and you know, start start working out for me. So I said, fuck, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. Got, a good transition. We, we got the last couple things, man. I'm gonna let you get up out of here. Um, some stuff that we jumped over in the story mm-hmm. that deserves its own attention. Uh, I know y'all super cool now. But if it's not too personal, what the hell happened with you and Beans at 3801 that night? Oh, we tore that motherfucker apart, man. I remember when it happened, and I'm going to let you go. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing, this is like early Twitter days. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing like some grainy, look like closed circuit TV footage. (laughs) And it just looked like two bulls going at motherfuckers. Bitches nah, getting listen. hit, people falling off the stage. I, rem- I remember seeing the video breaking. years ago. You ever seen cartoons where it just be dust? <laughs> like, like it just be dust. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, how this yeah, shit yeah. look. Yeah. Was, you know what's crazy? It's so weird. It's so weird because we so like this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like now, like we so like this, like now, like that's like my brother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it'd be weird having having that conversation and speaking on it on that level, but we both was in a space where we just was on what we was on at that time. Yeah, y'all both wasn't going for it. Whatever no, it we was. Wasn't, we wasn't going for that shit. And to be honest, it's like, we wasn't trying to hear nothing nobody was talking about. <laughs> right. We didn't give a fuck. And it was war. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we got busy in that motherfucker that night. And it, it, it was spilling out <laughs> to the actual street part of it. And so many people was connected to the situation. Right. That we kind of... Uh, yeah, well, how the did time. they are <laughs> living? <laughs> you niggas is crazy. <laughs> so how did it get squashed? Because um, I, I, I didn't even have nothing to do with it, and I was scared. Like I'm just a random citizen of Philadelphia. No, that's <laughs> Yo, you, you, I was afraid. You put Stone Cold and just rumbling a right in. Niggas in the supermarket like, getting get 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 hit with <laughs> getting hit with cabbage and cauliflower. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. That when that shit went when that shit went down, right? You gotta understand at this time. You gotta understand at this time and uh, and what it was. You gotta understand that who Beanie Siegel was. Yes, he was moment. the Broad Street bully at that moment. And you gotta understand that I knew like this is a serious situation. Yeah. And what a lot of people didn't know at that time was I had just had had my son. My son, no, my son was just about to be born, but. My 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 wife is from South Philly. Got you. So I was actually living down there at the time. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And in my mind, I said, either I'm going to kill him or he's going to kill me. Because I'm not backing down. I'm not, not going to go nowhere not to see my son. Right. And um, I knew what I was dealing with. Dealing with. See, people would sit there and they'd be like, oh, they've been downplaying. No, he was a serious nigga. Yeah. He's still a serious nigga to me. To this day, yeah. To this day, we both are serious niggas. But at that time, <clears throat> he could have... You know what I'm saying? And um, anybody would have did it. Yeah, you like, know what I mean. But I knew you could have had like a Minnesota nigga would have came to Philly right. to kill just you to kill, for being yeah, a zoo. Yeah, and it's like I had the same shit. Yeah, just you know what I mean, right here. You know what I mean? Because you got you got to understand a person's enemy becomes your friend when you become an enemy. Exactly. So on top of the people I already had, it's people like, I don't like that nigga any fucking right. Way. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm sure was, that was it going was on. a lot of that. But for some strange reason. We did not see each other for a long time. Because I had in my mind that I'm shooting at the first Bentley I see. I got first to. Bentley. I got to. Because at the time, he had the Bentley spur. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it's not just not being a tough guy. It's, yeah. I'm an, I've been hit before. 
So paranoia kicking in. I'm going right. through a bandit too. It got to go down. Mm. I'm wearing bulletproof vests and doing I'm We going through what we're going through. Yeah. Right? And uh, he called my phone one night. Let me give y'all this one because I didn't get this to everybody. <laughs> yeah. Y'all. He called my phone one night. I'm like, the fuck? Fuck this nigga what? <laughs> and that, but that was that was a thing in that era though. Like, like niggas that had beef would call each other on the phone yeah, and be yeah, like, so much boy. Yeah, yeah, what's up? Yeah, we we no, we, we it was, it was, it was, it was, it was I think it was like it was just becoming too much. Silly as shit. It was it was becoming it was becoming too much. And what happened was he was on papers at the time gotcha. when the fight occurred. Mm-hmm. I wasn't on paper. He was on federal papers. Mm-hmm. And he had got pulled over. He like, man, this shit getting crazy because you know, my PO, they trying to find out who you is to find out if I was fighting because, you know, that's a violation. Right. See, I know now I'm on papers. <laughs> so, so I know I'm about mm-hmm. to get off right now. But yeah. I know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, damn, like, so what's up? What you want me to tell them? You, you, uh, we wasn't fighting because I ain't got the problem with saying that. Yeah. I wasn't on papers. I don't want a nigga to go to jail. Mm-hmm. I really want to get busy in the street. Right. So I want you to be out here. <laughs> some war- that's some warrior in it. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's, like, that's how I felt at that moment. Ahead, you know what I'm saying? I, I, <laughs> actually, I, I do actually he wasn't there like, at all. Yeah, he, no, I don't know that nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, no, no. I guess it was P.O. was a nut at the time. <laughs> yeah. But I think that kind of, when I said you want me to talk to your P.O. and tell me about me, I think that kind of raises the antenna like, damn. It's a real nigga. That's a real nigga. Like, ain't no nigga gonna do that. But we still didn't see each other. I still ain't trusting niggas from South Philly <laughs> at the time. And I got a lot of great friends in South Philly. You know? <laughs> Even from his crew. Like, my, my niggas is from his crew. Like, his brother, his cousin. And that was another thing. Like, his brother News and, 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 and Cousin Lil. Like, I love them niggas. Right. Like, they love me to death. Like, it ain't nothing they won't do for me. And they was upset at the both of us. Like, they was pissed. Yeah. But Lil was locked up. And uh, news, you'll never see news. News yeah, don't news. no more. He be news, real low. News, yeah, he's like a, news. he's real low. Like, you, you see him. It's a holiday or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you ain't gonna see news. And it's like, it's a smile when you see him. Like, you can't even boil your face up at yeah. news. It's like, but. um, News is one of them legendary Philly figures to no, where it's definitely. like, he, he knows all the right people. Yeah, and it was like, back then, if you was trying to get Matt to do something, you know, Matt had the geographical South for ass news. <laughs> Don't talk to him. Go ask yeah. him. And he'll make it happen. Yeah. But, um, and, you know, these are things that me and Mac really, like, laugh and joke about now. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, we didn't see each other for a long period of time. And then uh, J.D. Kiss and them had some at the TLA. Mm-hmm. And I was there. He was there. I was feeling good. I was up at that time, too. I said, oh, yeah, let it happen tonight. <laughs> and we looked at each other and just bust out laughing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was just over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, and I think for both of us, it's like, Phew. God damn! That's Ooh, what yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because you know, him with other situations, they didn't end that way. They yeah. ended badly. Niggas was getting, you know, no disrespect to anybody. Niggas was getting pummeled. Niggas was getting punished. You know what I'm saying? And I was just one of the rappers that, you know, I fought back. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it doesn't sound like niggas was getting abused or something. Yeah, it sounded like, terrible. Oh, no, niggas was getting abused. Like, like, like niggas was fighting Ike or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are them type of drinks or something? But no, it's just like, it just didn't, it didn't, it didn't go that yeah. way. You know what I'm saying? So, this whole situation reminds me of a quote from Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle said, having powerful enemies is a blessing. Definitely. Because it's one of them situations where y'all both got so much to lose and mm-hmm. so interconnected that it had to end one of two ways. Either y'all probably both got to die or y'all got to squash this shit. But see, both, but one thing about me and him at that time we, we we were smart, but we were both two hard-headed motherfuckers. Yeah. Like, once our mind was made up and our tempers was made that's up. That's just what it was. That's just what the fuck it was. And you couldn't tell him nothing, you couldn't tell me nothing. And that shit, and it's crazy because that shit makes me and him so like this. Because, listen, we could cuss, e- like right now, we could cuss each other out right now. I'd be like, you fucking tripping. Why wouldn't you go, duh, 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 duh. He'd be like, man, come on. And he listened to me. And I listen to him. You right. know what I'm saying? So I think it just built a, a bond that niggas just can't even really come between. Them. Yeah, a mutual respect. Yeah, like you, our wives know each other. Like, you know what I'm saying? He talked to mom, talked to it. Like, yeah. It's just a different thing. It's mom. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, that's mom, like mom to me. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a different. Yellow a different button thing. that then. Damn sleep. Another mom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, wait, what? Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? So it was it was wild. Uh, for for the sake of for both of y'all, because y'all both legends, mm-hmm. and for the sake of the city and all of these people that care about everybody, it happened the way it was supposed to happen and it yeah, unfolded the way it, that it was supposed it, to. It, it, it you can't take it back, but yeah. it healed the situation healed yeah. itself. Because think, y'all both yeah. understood y'all level of power and the and influence that y'all had. I think what we what, what <laughs> me and him know now is that it became a part of our history. But we 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 know it's a part of our history that show the youngest, like, yo, just because you go through something, yeah. you can't be cool afterwards. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Something similar that happened later, way later, was mm-hmm. uh, was was PNB Rock and Core. They had a whole, I never knew they that. had a whole knockdown drag out like a crazy job. I never knew that. Chairs, tables, I never, I all never, kind of shit. I, I never knew that. And then they ended up squashing yeah. it. Yeah, you know I what I'm saying? Knew, I never knew that. <clears throat> never knew that. that was <clears throat> unfortunate, too. Um, Rest in peace to PNB Rock. Definitely rest yeah. in peace, Rock, man. Rock gave uh, gave me my first celebrity interview on this show. Did he? Yep. We went to the dope. He had a concert in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Dope show was like their second and third show. That's crazy. He was the headliner. It was him and Jeezy. That's crazy. We had him sitting here. Boone and text me. Where you at? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny as shit. And uh, he was the, him and Jeezy was headlining the joint in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I was doing, I was backstage doing interviews and all that, and mm-hmm. Rock gave me an interview. We booked Rock how many times at after midnight? Ten, like you know really? what I'm saying? Yeah, like Rock, Rock was Rock super important to both our all mm-hmm. our story. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like he was just he was one of the ones, man. Wow, great nigga. Wow, that's dope. That's some dope shit. All right, starting to land a plane here. Uh, about about ten fifteen minutes, we be done, man. Mm-hmm. G Unit and MMG. This is like the beef that just won't never stop. It go dead for a year and a half. It kicked back up for two more years. Um, 50's a mogul. Ross is a mogul. You're on one side. Meek's on another side. Mm. This started with them two, and it has fleshed out to be this whole bigger thing and all of that stuff. And I think mm. at this point, because it's been so long, everybody you know, kind of plays a position around it, and it's probably not as much ill will as it was once upon a time. Mm. But where do, where do you stand in the 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 history and the trajectory of this whole beef being as though one of the most like impactful incidents that mm-hmm. happened with this sh- this clash you are at the center of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, Ross and Fifth been going through that before Meek was there, right? Yeah, like 0405 or something like that. That's, that's number one. <clears throat> number two, the BT situation was unfortunate because that was a moment that was supposed to have been about Chris Light. Absolutely. Yeah. Wasn't supposed to be about nothing. If 50 Cent and Fat Joe can squash their yeah. beef and coexist, why can't everybody else? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that's what made it more reasoning to react on it because it was like you want to do this shit right now yeah you know what i'm saying that's like somebody coming to the cousin yeah, funeral yeah. it's like damn you you want to act like this in here we gotta beat your fucking ass <laughs> right. you know what i'm saying <laughs> so that that's what that was you know what i'm saying that had nothing to do with me yeah. and none of that you know what i'm saying like bro don't even i mean cousin don't even got nothing to do with that shit like yeah you know what i'm saying it's just you know that's the crew that put him on right you know what i'm saying so he got to stand with his guy you know what i'm saying but me and Cuz from the same hood. Me and Meek from the same neighborhood. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, my best friend, he used to be on his basketball team. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, so this shit go deep, deep rooted. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just it's just unfortunate that it's that way. And me and Meek talk all of the time. Right. Like, FaceTime. Like, all of the time. And it's yeah. like, we have a different type of respect for each other and understanding for each other. And it's always been this way. Before he was on, before he... New Ross before um I knew Fifth. It is like we always had that. Right. You know, even um, you know, now it's like his energy is so different. He don't even want that type of energy. Right. Anymore. You know what I'm saying? Meek is literally out here getting laws changed. Yeah, exactly. So how yeah. do you how do you you can't fill away with a person right. changing the laws? Now with 
fifth and 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 homeboy, that shit is deep rooted. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's we un, me and Meek understand that that I can't tell homie how to move. Dude. Right, homie is a boss. He's going to do what he wants to do. Right, and he's going to do what he wants to do. We both we both understand that. So it, that's like kind of like is what it is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I, I, you know it's like the, them two gonna go to anybody else to stay out of that shit. Right. You know what I'm but, you know, even like with the other nigga, Ross, man, the nigga Gunplay, I don't be worried about dude. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just had these rants and just put my name and shit. Yeah. You sit on Can Capone talking about, if you had a knife, what you'd have did to me? Nah, I'd have been shots fired, man. Damn, <laughs> you fucking crazy, nigga. Especially in a place like Georgia. Yeah, you think you about to put holes <laughs> that's in a hole? That's an that's a easy one in Georgia. That's a free kill. You know what I'm saying? Like, And it's like, bro, it's like, I, listen, people don't understand. When that incident, incident happened, I was on my way into the feds. Yeah. Within literally days. Yeah. I, I couldn't talk about it. I didn't want to talk about it. Right, because now that might be another yeah, charge or... I don't know. <laughs> well, this nigga, he doing promo. He doing TMZ. And blah, 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 blah. Then he lying because the one part of the video came out where he was just hitting me in my back. Yeah, some pepper spray. So right. he think, oh, that's all he got. Then you see the other John where he got yeah. flung around like a boomerang. He hit that yeah, motherfucking. That nice he hit that. He hit that bike rack. That's what yeah. I do. Yeah, I caught him with this John. <laughs> yeah, on the but, on the yeah. on the like a on the yeah, Jazzy Jeff. Like, yeah, like, huh. like, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like <laughs> then that part came out. And then I guess he got upset. Yeah, so I think he has moments where he has flashbacks. He got PTSD. Yeah, but see, my thing is right. No matter how ugly something gets. I'm never the type, I will never, ever, under no circumstances. Because people was DMing me, this was probably like a couple months ago when he started going through what he was going through with his family. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, why y'all DM, DMing me that shit? I don't care what a nigga, like, I don't, I'm, I don't get into that. Right. I'm not playing with nobody, kids and wife and all yeah, that shit. Yeah, the internet makes people play these yeah, I don't, games. I don't play them type of games. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just not one of them. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's how I felt about uh, the Hassan Campbell situation when I spoke up. Yeah, you know, his whole energy was super nasty. Yeah. Now, it, it now, just now, didn't make now a lot of sense. sense. Now, here's the flip side of that, right? Because I had reached out to Math Hoffa, right? Yeah. And I could possibly be wrong, but at that moment, I didn't feel I was wrong. And I had reached out to him because, guess what? Put it up. Let me say this. At one point in time, Math Hoffa used to be out here wilding out. Yes. Right? That's a fact. And not being around somebody for a period of time, years or whatever, people have the right to change and do what they want to do in their life. Yeah. So me reaching out to Math Hoffa, I'm thinking I'm reaching out to the old Math Hoffa. Got you. I'm not saying nothing's wrong with the new Math Hoffa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm reaching out to the old Math Hoffa, like, yo, Hoffa, where this nigga at? Because you was able to call me. Right. You know <laughs> when when you was looking for Nate. When you was looking for Tone Trump. <laughs> and you asking me. And I'm like, no. Nah. You know what I'm saying? It was, that's what I'm saying. There's other shit that took place with this nigga. And I love him. Yeah. Trump. I love Trump. I like but, the disclaimer. But it was other shit that took place with him that wouldn't have happened if I was there. Gotcha. They wouldn't even play like that. Yeah. But because I wasn't around it no more, now they think they could play with him in a certain way. So it gave certain people an opening. It gave them an open crack door to go, oh, I could do this because he not there. Because they knew what was going to come from me. Yeah. But me reaching out to high for like, yo, where this nigga Campbell at? And he like, yo, like... Come on, I'm like, bro, just let me talk to him. Yeah. And I really just wanted to have a conversation with him, not in the internet, yeah. just on it. Like, bro, like, I want to get him to understand that this is very serious what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I don't got nothing against you or nothing. Yeah. I'm just asking you not to do that. Yeah, my what friend that, my friend lost his son to gun violence. It's not conspiracy yeah, theory, Tom. Yeah, like, yeah, like it's, it's not conspiracy theory, it, Tom, and trying to I draw trying traffic to, to your platform. on you, get no blog, yeah. no views off you. I'm just asking you to do that. And I only did the upload block because I couldn't get him on the phone. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So You tried the other way. I tried the other way. Yeah. Um. So half thing was like, but what if he say something else? And well, you already you know how it's gonna get. Yeah. See, but that's what I'm saying. I'm like, but bro, that's <laughs> we. You gotta let men be men. Yeah. That's you know the risk. Saying? That's the risk that we take because he opened the door he to opened that. Opened that door to that, but it don't have to go that way. He could easily be like, damn, you right. You know, there ain't enough time. I'm gonna back up off of it, and that's that. Now, flip side, they try to say I think somebody was his child or whatever was going on. I'm like, 
I'm not doing that. Yeah. Like, well, if it is or not, that's, I'm not doing yeah. that. And I'm like, this is what I want niggas to understand. I don't just stand on that, you know, for one side. I stand on it right. with everything. Yeah. I don't play with people's kids yeah. or people's wives or girlfriends. I don't do that shit. Yeah. Like, that shit they do on the internet, pulling up on niggas' moms and all that shit. I don't respect that, that shit, shit at all. That shit is weird. sucker shit. Yeah. And at the end of the day, somebody with their fucking head blown off. That's a fact. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't do that. You put niggas in situations where they got to do something. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So... I told me and Hoffa went back and forth on the phone. And I said to him, <laughs> I lost respect for you. And when I said it, I was looking for the, excuse me, the old response from him. Looking for the, from the turn up. I was looking for him to turn up because that's what I'm used to from him. Yeah. And he didn't do that. He said, well, damn. Like, you lose respect for me because of what another man did. You understand? I said, no, I'm losing respect for you because... You gatekeeping my access to this person. To, to this nigga. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And that's where we kind of like... And as time went on, I thought about it. I'm like, damn, I kind of get what he's saying, but he know what I what I was saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't to put you in it, but I, you look at it as like, how, how do you not be in it? Some people just don't want to be a part of none of that shit. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? They just like, I'd just <laughs> rather not be in it. Did you ever talk to him? Since then? Yeah, no, that's not Campbell. No. Okay. No, I didn't talk to him. Um he actually he actually um I had talked to somebody else too. Um damn man. Oh, my man Hocus. You know Hocus? Hocus four fifth, yeah. And I think he had a relationship with him. And I think he kinda spoke to him. Mm-hmm. And then I think he kinda I think he did he did lay up off of it. Okay. I was like, okay, cool, because he had like a couple different clips. Yeah, no, he was, was he like was going crazy. hard. And once he got that initial hit of traffic, he said, "I'm yeah, coming right but, back." But, yeah, but <laughs> he, did, oh man! But what he did do was what he did do was right. He did take off certain clips where he was going really, really crazy. So gotcha. I said, okay, cool. And then Half had said something to me that made me understand. Uh, he said, "You know, when these niggas is making money off of these clips, they not." Yeah, you want to take them down. No. You understand what I'm saying? And that's when I started looking at this whole shit different. Like, yeah. as far as just the YouTube different. Like, yo, these niggas is really just they willing to just say any traction, everything with anybody traction. to get the traction, to yeah. get the money. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Niggas just trying to feed the algorithm right. and so pad like, their pockets. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what this shit come to. Yeah, but these niggas are not rappers, right? You know what I'm saying? You got rappers doing it now though. And these niggas are saying that they come from the streets, so it's like if you say a certain, if you cross right. a certain line, right. you know what come with that. So right. why play dumb when somebody crack you upside your head with a fucking anvil right. so, yeah. or shoot you? No, that's true. So <laughs> I, I just look at it like this wasn't. It wasn't me out here trying to the house on a camera. I wasn't on that. Right. I just right. wanted to be like, yo, come on. Yeah, bro, you had you down. you approached it from a genuine concern yeah, from, like, from a on, friend. Yeah, like somebody my man couldn't think think straight at that time. Yeah. And and it was like, damn, he wasn't even Gil wasn't even on the internet. It's like I ain't want that nigga to see that shit. Yeah, that he come back and then that's the first thing he see is or this. Or not nigga. even come back. He ride the fuck up there looking for this nigga. Right. And then that shit gets goofy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, you know, cheese cheese is I watched cheese grow up from here. Like, not on no rapper shit. I'm talking about families, Tyler. Like, that was like my nephew. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So I took that shit offensive to the heart. Like, you don't do no shit like that. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like, and another thing, like, you got so many dudes outside of this city that be speaking on niggas. I don't respect that shit. Right. I don't respect it. Like, and I'm not using this to call niggas out and all like the whack 100s and all them niggas. When they be disrespecting niggas and playing with niggas from Philly. I don't respect that shit. Whether they say Meek Mill's name, Gilly the Kid, anybody from the city of Philadelphia. Like, at the end of the day, I fuck with Big U. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I never see Big U disrespect nobody from the city of Philadelphia. Big U used to come here all the time because of Deshaun Jackson. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, and uh, a few other people. But I never seen him do that. And... I don't have an issue with WAC 100. I don't know WAC 100 to have an issue with him. Right. But at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure if a Philly nigga got on the internet and just started dissing niggas from the West Coast, he would have an issue with that. Right. So it's like, damn, my nigga, where to respect that? Is it like you just don't fuck with niggas on the East Coast? You don't fuck with Philly? What is it? Or because, you just trying to step on niggas? Like, what is it? Yeah. Well, the the reality is the YouTube especially has and Instagram has basically, you ever heard the term no press is bad press? Yeah, but but, that, but it, it, that's true. But what I'm saying, no, I'm is saying the, they've they've like taken that shit to the extreme now, where it's like as long as I'm getting the traction and the inner and the uh, engagement, 
I don't give a fuck if, who I offend. Because motherfuckers but, ain't leaving the house. Because they banking but, but on not the seeing niggas. Yeah, I'm betting the door is locked. But, but listen, bro, I'm bro, banking bro, on not going out there. But 100 is leaving the house. Listen, here's the thing. This is why it's so and important. Like, getting a lot because of shit. Birdman is my nigga. Uh -huh. Like, we talk. That's my nigga. Yeah. And I know how he feel about Wack, and I know how Wack feel about him. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I don't know Wack 100. I never had a conversation with Wack 100. But I'm saying this to say, my nigga, let's, let's bridge this gap. Let's stop this shit because Philly shouldn't be, we don't want to feel that type of energy. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Like, niggas be playing, and then when something go down, then what? At the end of the day. It's not about being a tough guy, but don't force niggas' hands yeah. to feel like niggas got to react a certain way. Right. Same way, when you come out your house, and you do it, like I hear him saying on multiple interviews, yeah, he'll be with his wife somewhere, and he ain't going to back down. I respect that. You ain't supposed to back down. Right. But why create issues and say shit about niggas yeah. from the city? I ain't talking about nowhere else. Right. From this town for no reason. Yeah. You want to fight this nigga? You want to fight this person? Niggas ain't waking up saying they want to fight you, bro. You probably a hell of a motherfucking manager. You took blue face, blew him up. You got behind game, did what you did with him. Yeah. You, you know something. You in this right. industry. You know something. You've been in the industry 15, doing. 16 years. You so know what you're you doing. you strong at that. So why you go from that to... Going at niggas, I don't, yeah. I, just, I don't understand it. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, we don't, our city, we don't really have nobody that's like really stepping to the plate. Like, we ain't going for that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's and they ain't got to be a tough guy because I can have a conversation with any of them niggas over there. Yeah. And, and probably get them to understand, like, damn, I respect what he on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I can get to any nigga in the city that they may got an issue with. Like, yo, why don't y'all fix that? Because right. that shit ain't really nothing. Yeah. We can connect the dots and make money. We need to make this city more of a city that people want to come to. Absolutely. Motherfuckers don't even want to come here. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's yeah. like, come on, man. No, I, I totally agree with that. Gotta change the gap. For sure. That's real. Uh, last couple questions, bro. Mm -hmm. um, where do you stand with Ross, with Khaled, with gunplay in 2024? I stand with 50 Cent. I would never ever go against him under no circumstances. I don't give a fuck. I stand with 50 Cent. Meek Mills is my friend and will always be my friend. Right. That's just that. Nothing will ever, like, that's just that. The, the love and the respect that me and Meek Mills have, no. Mm -mm. But, and Fifth understands this and yeah. knows this. But with them niggas. And, and Fifth and Meek have their own relationship yeah, also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, don't, he don't, they've talked and all of that. Yeah. Like, listen. Let me tell you a story about me and DJ Khaled. This going to fuck your head up. Me and Beans is in Miami. We out there. So Beans like, yo, I got to go to Khaled's studio. I'm like, what? Is this before? No. What, the what the fight? Not, like before, no, this no, literally no. two weeks before the fight. Okay. Before the BET shit. So you and Beans in Miami. Yes. Before BET Hip Hop Awards, going to Khaled's crib. Yes, listen. <laughs> that's what's crib to studio. To studio. So... Uh, really, so watch this. This going to fuck y'all up. We in a hotel. He's like, I got to go do a verse for Khaled. Uh, I would think Khaled had an album coming out. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, he like, we go. I'm like, man, I ain't going to that nigga's studio. Because I'm just like, I'm not going to disrespect the man and go to his studio, right? And um, I hit fifth. I said, yo, listen, me and Mac out here, he got to go to Khaled shit and do some shit. He said, oh, go, like. Yeah, go. Like, you like, go. Because my old joint is, you know, Fifth is different. Yeah, yeah. You know, video come out, I'm in the motherfucker. That nigga feel like, that nigga see me and be like, oh, oh, oh nigga, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, so he like, nah, I go. I'm like, all right, boom. So we gets there, and uh, <laughs> they open the door, and who opens the door? J1s. You know J1s? Yeah, I know J1s. Yeah. I know J1s very well. So J1s see beans, hug beans. And then he see me, he like, oh, man. <laughs> Knox, 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 what are we doing? What are, <laughs> what are you doing what here? What are we doing? What, no, what is going on? Yeah. Why, what's, I said, man, I ain't on nothing, Jay. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I'm with this nigga. I ain't on nothing. He like, I got to let Kyle know. <laughs> <laughs> this is a true story. This is a true story. So he goes to tell Kyle. Yes. Because now, mind you, I had went on World Star years ago and said something about Cali. Gotcha. I said Cal because Cali had came here. Hold on, wow, that was when third party shit was going on. You know, we go out third party. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think a few artists he 
supposed to have to say he would look out or play their record or whatever, and he didn't. That's what they said. Right. I went on World Star and was like, DJ Khaled ain't allowed in Philly no more. Oh, you banned him. No it's, fly zone. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's a no fly zone if he ain't playing Meek Mills, Reed Dollars, and all these other niggas. And I'm going to get to the motherfucker. I'm going to get to this part. I'm going to remember the part. So he seen that shit. J1 seen it too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they felt the way about that. Me and J1 actually had talked about it. So Khaled came out and he was like, What's up? Like, not the tough way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real cool dude. What's good? Some, some, some gallows, and he was like, man, I just don't know. And I told him, like, same thing. I told him, like, man, I, you know, you came to the city and, you know, niggas are saying you are. He like, no, I wasn't even like that. And he was like, man. And while we at it, he like, I just don't even understand what, 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 why Fifth got a problem with me. And I said, and I said, this is my thing. I said, I can't speak for the big homie, man. Like, that's a conversation y'all got to have. I right. can't speak for him. I'm not here to speak for him. I solely came for beans. I can only speak on what... I say it on World Star, but when it comes to what other homies feel, I'm not in a position to speak right, on that. Right. And he respected it. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, No, nah, it's all love with me, man. I ain't knowing nothing. All good. Beans did his verse. They had us drinking all this fucking Syrah. <laughs> I can say it now because Fifth did Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. The shit with Diddy's kind of crazy. <laughs> Very bad. <laughs> but we, you know, and that was that. And yeah. um, me and J1s got super tight then. Yeah. And it's crazy because I had called J1s because. They was on the way to the BET Hip Hop Awards, and so was we. And they bus caught on fire. Mm. They tour bus, so niggas ain't even know if them niggas lived. Right. And I hit him like, yo, what the fuck? And he like, no, no, we good. You know what I mean? So who knows where That's that crazy. was going to go. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, all the way to the awards. You know, even with Fat Joe, like a lot of people didn't know Fat Joe. Like Eve Ferreira that shoot all our videos is Fat Joe, man. Right. So it was a lot of... Talk up real quick, man. <laughs> Talk about... The Terror Squad that shit was G Unit shit because it's trick it, that would have got more tricky than anything. That shit would have bad because a lot of people don't know Joe and Macho and all of them had a presence in Philadelphia equal very to what they serious. had in New York. Yeah, that, that's very serious. Um, I'm gonna tell you who I was really concerned about in that in that situation. Pistol Pete. It's a different type of dude. Pistol Pete was the one that I always was concerned about, like because I just knew he he had it. He had it in. You could just see he had that shit in him. Like, I listened to his podcast that shit. a couple of episodes. You could yeah, tell. Like he wanted the you could tell he he's a nigga. Praying. He's a nigga that jumps out your trash can. Yeah, yeah like he, he, I, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yo, yeah, yo, you know the Puerto Ricans be dancing with them now. Nah, <laughs> yeah, the niggas, yeah, they get busy with, and they had a yeah. lot of them niggas. It was a lot and, of them, yeah. and and Joe. Joe get busy. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And and player. You know what I'm saying? My <laughs> man player, they get busy now. Yeah. Like, so you <laughs> better you think it wrong. If you think like, I think that was a real dangerous one. Yeah. I think that was one that was uh it, it it was a it was good to squash. And it know? was so immediate because everybody was like Queens, the Bronx. Nick, the, uh, it's the wildest it, shit about that whole scenario, and this is the wildest thing, I'll never forget it. There was a record called New Day that 50 had, and Alicia Keys had the same record too. Something had happened with that, but me, 50 Cent, and Chris Lighty had to go to see Alicia Keys about the record, right? And this is this is like the last days that I remember spending with, with Chris Lighty. Right. And, uh, yeah, we went to go... See about that record. So when everything started to take place after Chris passed away, it hit like a it hit like a storm. Cause yeah, I remember Joe and Fifth was mm-hmm. it was under violator. Yeah. And that's what really did it. I think that that moment right there, I was there when the when the when they brought back the audio of who was gonna do because they got <laughs> this is how they gave it to Fifth. So you you see how you seen the performance with all of them for for Chris? Yeah, they had an MP3 file. They played on the computer. They didn't tell him who was all going to be performing. Okay, they just played. In fact, yeah, I feel oh, like I've heard shit. something's close to this. <laughs> they played it right. Yeah, yeah. And this is how they told Fifth that he that Joe was going to be on there. We standing there, and they playing it. He listening to it. They never told him Joe was going to be. On. And he heard Missy part. He heard. Buster, somebody, he heard a couple people parts, and then he heard Joe part, and they said, yeah, you come after that. 
and you just got to stand next to Joe. And his response was like, okay. Now, this without them talking, this without them seeing each other yet, or nothing. And uh, that's when kind of like niggas knew like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It's about to get different. And when we got there, it, it, you know, it got different. It got different. They, wouldn't, they didn't want to let all of us in at the same time. And that's when I first seen Pistol. Mm-hmm. And uh, Fifth was like, we not going in unless they going in with us, too. Yeah. It's G-Unit. Terror Squad. Terror Squad. And that changed everything. You know what I'm saying? And then that dumb nigga did the bullshit afterwards. Yeah. This was like Backstage crazy. and all that but shit. But him and Joe was already squashed. It was mm-hmm. already over. Mm-hmm. Already over. Yeah. Last thing, Brody. Mm-hmm. Final lap tour. Mm-hmm. Over a million tickets sold. Mm-hmm. 30 countries sold out worldwide. 50 busted Yayo. Uncle Murder, Jeremiah. Um, did you jump on the tour? How many uh, dates was you around for that? Dates we went. Shit, I went a few. You went a few? Yeah, I went, <laughs> a, I went a few. And then, you know, they started doing that overseas shit. Yeah. Different. Yeah. But amazing. Um, I think the big, one of the biggest nights was L.A. L.A. was the biggest night. Where did you perform at L.A.? What's that shit called? Staples Center. Staples. That bitch was packed to the ceiling. Yeah. And, I, yo, like, the celebrities was, everybody was there. Yeah. Like, just walking around. Yeah, I'm not was. sure we've seen a 20th anniversary situation to an album as good as this one. It looked like that shit just came out. Right. It looked um, like it came out that week. <laughs> and the crazy part is, shout out Clint Coley, because we did a show in the end of 22 and Clint was saying you know next year is the 20th anniversary of Give It Your Die Trying and he was like what happened with 50 going tour for that and bro he like Clint called that shit yeah. like completely let like, me tell you something bro that nigga he an animal bro do you understand how many shows he just did yeah a hundred and some shows that nigga's an animal and he come home, I think the day of tomorrow, he come home yesterday, right? Yeah. And guess what? He about to go back on tour. Right? Man, this nigga about to do parties and all <laughs> kind of shit. Like, sit the fuck down. <laughs> you know, sit down. You know, sit down. He can go, we going to be out in Miami for New Year's. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he like, that nigga And then Tycoon right? is coming up, right? With a couple months? Yeah, that shit different. Cause he's doing Tycoon twice now, right? I think in New York and Houston, right? Well, he he doing he's he. I can't announce where it's gonna be at. Okay. Because I'm not positive it's gonna be there. And I don't want to jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why the fuck you say that? Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I don't know where he's gonna um do that, but but I know last year he did. It was the first year like he did like two parts to it. Like, yeah, him and my man Ant. Yeah. Ant, Ant, my man Ant. Um, that's Chris Brown manager. That's my nigga right there. Yeah. But they doing um, they doing a, they doing a R&B Tycoon. Mm. 13th of February. Gotcha. That's gonna be crazy. Oh yeah, that makes sense. I think y'all I think I think y'all should pop out to that. Uh where is where's it gonna be? Atlanta. Atlanta. I think y'all should pop out to that. Uh, yeah, I can't really say much. You, but. you say you think we should pop out. Is this all expenses included? Pop out or? <laughs> no nigga, I said pop out. <laughs> <laughs> no, get get your ass down there and then you know I ain't say shit about no MK where you at <laughs> Carp where you there. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's real though. But um, yeah, that shit gonna be crazy. Tycoon, y'all, y'all ain't come to Tycoon. Right? I ain't been to Tycoon yet, bro. You, you tripping? I know uh, Trey Songs has been banned from Tycoon. He no, had, I think it's <laughs> is this banned off. Ban lift ban off. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know Trey. Trey, they said Trey had too much fun at Tycoon. He got banned. No, you, I think Trey shit lifted. It ain't lifted. Oh, Jack, we should ain't never get. <laughs> Yeah, Dan, Dan, no, uh, no, no mo- money move. Oh, yeah, here, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was my selling. Trey, uh, there was a lot of people there. Yeah. There was a lot that took down, that went down at Tycoon. Yeah. Boy, oh, boy. <laughs> Only if you know. Yeah. Y'all don't miss the next one. Woo! That's funny as shit. Nah, but to end it all out, I ain't gonna front. You know what I'm saying? I hope, like, all the guys from the G and Philly thing, I hope they. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Continue. Where do you and Tone Trump stand today? Nah, we cool. Yeah. Just got to tap his chest. Just big brother, little brother. Yeah. Sometimes I just tap him and be like, nigga, you know, stop. 
you acting crazy now. Because he'll go off and get into some other shit. Like he's doing the Muslim dying thing now, right? Yeah. yeah so I think that's he just said he opening up a, uh, he got the restaurant in Chester, Union Steaks, and then he opened up another spot in Philly somewhere. There you go. Chicken restaurant. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's working out for him, see? He played you for that plug. <laughs> 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 What's the next five years like for Mike Nice? Listen, hopefully I'll be a multi-millionaire and I won't see you niggas. <laughs> no, I'll just be on FaceTime hey. like we coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'm trying. You know, my whole thing is this movie shit. You know what I mean? Uh, booking agent company. I'm trying to start up. Yeah. Yo, you know listen. Yeah. I was gonna say before we get out of here, mm -hmm. you are. People don't know. Mm -hmm. But I know, because I be having to jump on the phone with you sometimes and try right, right, to right. figure shit out. Figure you shit. are you are the plug to, like, a lot, a lot of different talent. So yeah. it's like party promotion, appearances, yeah. women empowerment brunches. You got all of the, all you know, of the girls on TV. I like about it, though, is that sometimes shit don't go right. Yeah. And it makes me look like I'm the I'm the guy that's making it go wrong. Yeah, on either end. <laughs> shit go weird with the money or something. It's like, I, yeah. that's why I be kind of, I don't be like doing it. You know what you got to do? Man. You got to put like a buffer in between. Like you just be the head and the representation the, of it. But the part of it, the, the, it's good you say that, bro. But these niggas don't want to, they don't want to deal with nobody else. Yeah. Like our side of it is cool with dealing with anybody to make it happen. Right. But they don't want to deal, because I'm dealing with the source. I'm not dealing with. Right. In betweens, I'm dealing with that. If it's an actor, I'm talking to the actor. Absolutely, I'm not talking to the manager or like uh, maybe the day of. But it's like, yo, Knox wanted to do it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, like all them times that Little Meech been out here yeah, booked, yeah. whatever. That's yeah. that's your work. Yeah, like, like you don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand. Yeah, that's what I'm you know what saying. Yeah, that's my nephew. Like, that's, yeah, like like y'all just me home. You yeah, y'all just had the uh, had the party on th on uh, Thanksgiving night, and he just yeah, he was here for something else, and he just he just Facetime me. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah, come on. You know what I mean? So it's like. You got one to one relationships with a lot of people that's like yeah. established and emerging stars. Yeah. My, another, another thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do what Charlie Mack used to do with The Weeknd. The Weeknd? Yeah, I want to bring it here. You know what I'm saying? I want to bring it here. But I, I think that's something I can't do alone. I want to bring in people. You need to bring in people like y'all and yeah. Ben and Nah, we want to we want to be a part of it, man. That's if, what, that's if, big. Figure it out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like even with this club shit, like I feel like we need our own club. Absolutely. Like like, like what what do we have that Artists can come and be like, I'm going there. Like, remember back in the day, like when they did the powerhouse, he's like, acts would come the day before. Yes. Yeah. And you could go eat or you could do whatever, yeah. bowl, whatever you want to do. Now it's like niggas is coming in the day of. Yeah. But if they know it's something here to do, it's like, well, I'm coming the day before, man, and I'm going to go get with Knox and them. 2012, you know I did a powerhouse pre-party at mm -hmm. Aura, the same venue that we had your going away wow. party. Meek came, Trey See? Songs came, yep. niggas pulled the buses up on the yep. block while they came. I remember that shit. Yeah. Matter and fact, that was on the Trey Thursday. came back again the night of my Yeah. 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 <laughs> Trey, like, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't stop. He came back. I remember yeah. that. Y'all be came back that night. So, yeah, it's like those moments, we need that yeah. to bring that back. But it takes for a certain type of guys to do it, like how Black Friday did it. I feel like we could do it. We Real all talk. team up together. We could do it. See, niggas be so caught up and worry about the money. If you just focus on making the situation successful and set up everything, yeah, so put the, the right foundation come, down. Every it'll fall in place. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? But because you got to think about it, the places they was getting back then was what's that joint on? Uh, what's that joint on? Uh, is it is it Chestnut? What what's that mall right there on Chestnut Street? Oh, right, is that Chestnut where Del Frisco's at? Yeah, that's Chestnut oh, Street. All right, what's that mall right there? It's a, Liberty Place. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. They didn't have parties in a Liberty Place, bro. Yeah. Liberty yeah. Place. Liberty, Liberty Place. Place. Gallery. King of Prussia. Gallery uh, please, Center. please touch museum. Yeah, like these is like nobody does this shit no more. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? But it's like who would they turn to to do it? So let's figure it out. Yeah. Let's team up and figure it out. I'm with it. Absolutely, man. MK, let's do it. Appreciate you to the max, bro. I think I gave you the back. You Listen, man, you had to come Yo. top me. Yeah, I, 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 mean? I, I done seen all your interviews. You, no, you, you had you, to come top me. It wasn't like this. You yeah, know what I'm saying? To you raw and uncut. Yes, you I did. I already know what y'all gonna do. The subject matter. He speaks white quality. No, that's all I love. That's respectable, man. I love it, man. Let's do it. I'm with y'all. Like, I, I enjoy talking to you. We gotta have you back. We gotta make you a field correspondent or something, man. Yeah. <laughs> Take it away, Mike. Take it away. <laughs> I still don't fuck with these niggas. <laughs> I'm here with these nut-ass niggas. <laughs> <laughs>
Nah, real shit, man. Uh, man give everybody your socials. Uh, you know, uh, any social, 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 social media. Oh. You know, you know, you know. We didn't, we didn't got, we didn't like got like so abbreviated. Shit, yeah, we didn't got so like abbreviated. Like social media. <laughs> 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 oh, don't get dead. <laughs> Damn, I'm gonna fuck a Bentley. <laughs> you know, like, I ain't gonna, I can't even afford no Bentley. You know, boost your credit up and everything. How you the fuck living out yeah. King of Prussia somewhere? <laughs> no, but, um, so my socials is, uh, shit. That's crazy because when people be texting me certain little abbreviations, I be copying that shit sitting to my daughter, like, what they say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I understand. I had, I had Knox up the other day from, from a number that he has of mine. I was like, yo, uh, we, we good for this Saturday. He's like, who, f- first of all, who is this? Yeah, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> who is this? There's too much going on out here, <laughs> for real. But on my social, uh, Instagram, uh, Mike Knox Official, Twitter, Mike Knox, right? Yeah, I don't be on Facebook, y'all. I'm telling y'all, anybody answer any Facebook messages, they being you're getting kicked. scammed. It ain't me. <laughs> yeah. It ain't me. I'm telling you right now, it's there. It's my Facebook, but it ain't me. Yeah, right, yeah. See, he's saying this him. Uh, YouTube, Mike Knox uh, official. Yeah, of course, Mike Knox official. Uh, that's it. Mike, we appreciate you, dog. Yeah, for sure. It's whatever, man. I'm here. Get me. I'm looking for the next hottest rapper. So, so tap in with me. Let me get my forty percent, and then I pass yeah. you to Knox, and yeah, then he get his forty. Yeah. <laughs> then he get his forty, then, and then yeah. we introduce you to Lyles and, f- and Five and everybody then else. We but, go up. but we got to make the pro. The, it starts with my forty. Oh so. man! Or <laughs> they shit. Cut them down records. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, Realest real podcast right. ever. We are yeah, Mike Knox. Sure, my God. Appreciate y'all, man. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. out of here.